the playstation collectors podcast this is season number three episode 27 and tonight we welcome ultra boss 64 to the show What's up, man? how's it going everybody glad to be yeah. here thank you for having me oh, thanks for joining us man it's good to have you on the show i was saying before we've known each other for years but we've never really chatted before so now it's good to finally catch up and chat Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, this is, you know, I've, I've checked out some of the earlier podcasts and uh, it, it seems very chummy and I, I really wanted to be a part of this. So just really glad to be here so we can talk some games. Yeah, awesome, man. Oh, well, for everyone who doesn't know you, Morgan, tell us who you are, what you do, and what you collect. Yeah, so Morgan, I'm 30 years old. I've been collecting for uh, 10 years, a gamer all my life. Actually, a uh, funny story. Uh, I was actually potty trained on the NES. Uh, I know that's that's sort of an embarrassing story for a lot of you know anyone else, but for me, it's like a, a badge of honor, I guess you could say. Uh, primarily, though, collecting RPGs and uh, some horror, a little bit of visual novel, uh, but primarily like ninety percent of the collections RPGs. Uh, it's 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 been a it's been a love of mine for for quite some time now. Nice, and you dabble in lots of different systems. I can see complete in box N64, PS2, PS1 behind you, some awesome stuff. Yeah, pretty much everything from... Uh, I don't do any NES, um, that, because quite frankly, most of the NES RPGs are quite horrible. Uh, so anything Super Nintendo and forward is pretty well fair game. Nice, awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, it's got... Uh, I'm trying to... I mean... The F Final Fantasy on the NES is very, yeah, it's like, all right, I don't really love it. Like people say, it's, you know, I know I understand why it's like a, a big game for what it became, but it's not the greatest game. I do like um, the Dragon Warrior games, but they don't really get great until like three, to be honest with you. Like one is one is one is fun, but it's like super simple. Two is a, like better, but it's it's not that great. Three is fantastic. Three is like a really well fleshed out RPG. Um. But yeah, those are the ones, the only ones I really love on the NES for RPGs, I'd say. Um, I like the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. You ever play those games on the NES, though? I don't know why I like those. Anyone PS4? Bit. Yeah, they were cool back then. They were like little strategy games on the NES. Those are kind of fun. And then... They um, almost have, like, Dynasty Warrior elements to them? Mm, the way I remember it, it was more like a strategy RPG, and it was like more like you move like it was like Chinese armies fighting, and like, oh gosh, I don't remember it that well. It was like Nobunaga's Ambition or something like that too. I used to play yeah. on that game, so I guess if you count those, those are decent. But that's it's not like a powerhouse for 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 sure. But I liked um, I don't even know what you call it an RPG. Did you ever play Fax and do? I love that game. Did you ever play that game on the NES? It's like a two D action type game but it's got like i don't know you have to like it's kind of like an rpg because you do like upgrade your gear and you have like to save with codes though it's not like a save file you have to like write down codes it's one of those games so i don't know i guess in that case do you consider highlight an rpg i consider it a goddamn curse bane of my existence that was like like i well, on the show 
I can't, it was like one of the topics was like, what was a game that like the cover looked amazing. And then you got home and you were like, so disappointed with the game. And I lied was my pick because it's like, yeah, man, I the RPG. This dude's got the sword. He's fighting this dragon. It's going to be freaking badass, man. I, I love killing dragons. And I get home and I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's just like, I don't know what to do. I've been uh, ripped off. <laughs> I did not like Hyde Light. It, I, I went, re, I revisited it as an adult because it was like, I remember playing it as a kid, just being like, the hell are you supposed to do in this game? Like, I didn't understand the game. I was probably too young or something, but I went back and it was okay, but I don't know. I don't know what I'd call it. I guess it's an RPG. Did, did, I guess that means you didn't adventure into the uh, the, the later sequel and virtual highlight on the Saturn, because that's probably one of the ugliest fucking things I've ever played in my existence. Like the I way the camera like, spins around and like it's, everything's just super pixelated and you can't tell where the hell you're going. It, it's mm, yeah, awful. there was a there was a super highlight and I I never played the sequels no, but I I remember I did watch the AVGN episode where he talked about one of the highlights. I <laughs> mean, it looks pretty bad. So, but you know, hey, whatever. It's not about some you know some of those older games. They were just trying new stuff, and they, it was, just came out real awkward. And like it, 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 the heart was in the right place. It just, you know, that's a, with a lot of old games. That's how I feel. It's like it's a lot of old games are like the controls are bad, or the camera is bad, or like the inventory system's bad, or like they just didn't figure out like a couple of things that made the game bad. But other than that, it could have been all right. In saying that, there could have been one thing in that game that inspired a future game developer, and they put it in their game, and it turned into a good feature so you never know that's true the guy who made dark souls is like if it hadn't been for hide Light, no dark souls you guys don't understand i got so pissed at that game i made i took it out on i don't know you know well, i'm gonna take it out on everyone from the future <laughs> yeah if, if miyazaki came out and said that i would i would flip shit <laughs> I, I guess it like makes sense why that's a hundred dollar game now have come from, but I can't put my finger on the game. I always wonder, like, sometimes I do feel like some game designers are like sadists or something. You ever play a game or something and you just play something and you're like, who put this in here? Who did this? Why would you do this? That's how I feel right now. I'm playing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and, um, you know, the little piano parts? You can yeah, play yeah, the yeah. Piano. Yeah, well, they put a little thing in there with this perfect rating. So you can get like three stars or your gold star, whatever. But they have like a special thing if you get it perfect. Why would you do that? Why would you put it in there? Why would you put that in there? So now I'm over here like a psycho <coughs> for hours playing this stupid piano instead of playing fucking the game. Like you guys don't understand. Like people put that in there like, a, you know, but like I can't, I'm obsessed. I can't like get past these things. I'm just like, oh, I have to sit here and play this piano for 12 hours until I get a perfect score. My girlfriend's like, Before we started doing? the podcast, Joe was telling us how he hasn't finished Final Fantasy 16 yet. I think uh, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth yet. I think we just mm -hmm. worked out why. <laughs> We've stuck on this piano mission for six hours. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they tricked me. So, like, the first like few songs, they weren't that bad. So, I could sit there. It took me like maybe like 45 minutes to get it, you know? All right. You know, but now I'm committed. I've gotten like four perfect songs. And now I'm on the, the last few songs and they're hard as balls <laughs> they're wicked hard they really are they're like they're they're weird too because you know me i like rhythm games so i'm just like oh, i can just like you know I, I feel like i could do it eventually but it is weird because you have to like there's like two circles and you have to pick the angles that they come in and so not only do they come in like at different rhythms but they're going different directions and it's like it's like doing the you know what i mean it's like trying to it's like, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, like yeah. it's like it's like oh it's like i don't know it's just goofy and weird it'd and be awkward. easier to just get a keyboard and play it at this point right it would be e yes yes there yeah. are quite there are a lot of rhythm games where the game is harder than the song itself in real life you know what i mean like i would have an easier time playing a dragon force song on a guitar i was, I was just about to than, mention than to play uh, play it on fucking beat saber because it's like <laughs> wow I'm like, I'm not physically in shape enough to do it on Beat Saber. 
<laughs> like, like, like I'm gonna die, but like I can move my hands pretty quick. You know what I mean? Like I'm, that's possible. But this this whole this I is just ridiculous, bro. I'll die. I'll fall. Like I can't even practice the song because if I play it twice, I'm like, oh, all right, I need to. Oh, geez, I need some water. <laughs> I can't even practice. It's so intense. But you don't Dad. play that song. You have to learn the whole thing. You have to know it off by heart. That's the only way to play it. Don't start playing Dance Dance Revolution then, if that's the case. Mm -mm. <laughs> it, no. It's, it's going to be a time. I so I actually I made that mistake once. I went to like uh, out. To, we went to um, this place called Dave and Buster's, and you you know probably Dave and Buster's, but Figsy probably doesn't. It's like a, a it's like a arcade bar, barcade type thing. Like Chuck E. Cheese for adults. Yeah, it's like a it's like a franchise. It's like a it's 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 like kind of like just an arcade, but it's they have food and beer and drinks and stuff. Anyway, I went there with like a, a group of people and like I we you know it was all fine and dandy, but they had a dance dance revolution machine and I'm over here like well I love rhythm games. I'm gonna put this shit on hard mode, baby. And so I played it and like dude, like after like two songs, I'm like crippled. I was like, oh what have I done? I've used muscles that I haven't used since I was 14. Oh God, what have I done? Like I was in so much pain from just trying to be like, to play the stupid game. It was hilarious. Like the next day, like I remember like waking up feeling like I went to the gym or something because I played stupid dance dance. Forever. Oh my God. It really is an incredible like cardio workout. I do that on the regular, like on the weekends. So mm -hmm. at least at least on like Saturdays, I'll typically do like three solid hours of Dance Dance Revolution, which in the home version is ITG Mania or uh, In the Groove. Um, but yeah, like as far as like difficulty ratings, everything's like zero to 20. And I'm playing like 19s because there no 20s exist. And it's it's solid. Like today I played for three hours and I think it said I burned 2000 calories, which is nuts. So then mm -hmm. I just went to the like the fish place and just chowed down on food afterwards. So I was so exhausted. Sounds like mm -hmm. it's good exercise. Like you say the same with Beach Saver, right, Joe? That, like you go oh, yeah. for a couple of hours and then you're covered in sweat and exhausted and everything. If you play on expert, yeah, expert plus. So if you play it on like the easy mode, you'll be chilling. You know what I mean? You don't have to make it like that, but as soon as you put it on expert plus, the tempo is vastly faster. So yeah, you're 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 moving your ass. But the difference is like Beat Saber, like you'll be sweaty and your arms will be burning, but that's it. Dance Dance Revolution, you're using your, your hips and your, your legs. And yeah, and I'm, I, you know, and if you're not someone who's out jogging, riding bikes, you know, doing that stuff a lot, you're going to be in pain. You're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be in pain. But Beat Saber can do that. Like Beat Saber, some of the songs they have like, um, uh, like blocks you have to like dodge, you have to like squeeze. You have to like uh, crouch under and stuff like that, squat under and stuff like that. And sometimes you have to like hold the squats for a while. So if you play certain songs a lot, you'll have the similar problem because you're doing all these freaking like shimmies and things in, in your room and stuff like that. And my deepest fear is that my girlfriend's going to record me playing that and put it on the Internet. So I'm going to look so goofy. It's just ridiculous playing that shit. Nah, it'll go <laughs> viral because you like completed a song on expert mode. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's when you get ahead of it and just record it yourself and put it on the internet. That's right. And I wear a tutu. Let's go. <laughs> and a tiara? Yeah. I'm a pretty, pretty, pretty princess. It'll fit on the now. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, no, apparently, if you want to stream Beat Saber, you have to like go on Twitch and become a furry of some sort of digital furry creature. You have to be some sort of anime thing. Because I like, I'm like, I'm gonna watch Beat Saber, and I spent there, I spent there two hours. I'm like, can I look at a human? Are there any human beings? I don't want to watch a fox play. I don't want to watch a little purple bear play. I don't want to. What the hell is with this fucking shit? Like, it makes me not want to play Beat Saber. I'm like, is this community just a bunch of furries? Like, is that the only people who play Beat Saber? Because no offense, I'm like, I don't know if I'll fit in here, folks. This is a little odd. Uh, anybody? No, sorry. Do I find we get it in the gear, I guess. I say you know, it's, it's it's just it can be weird sometimes. Like, oh, yeah, I got nothing against it, but maybe it's I a generational person, thing. That's me. So, yes, I literally go through and I'm like, I don't care. I would rather watch someone with three viewers who's a human than all these people who look like digital uh, Disney characters. 
Oh, I someone with no cam. Just sitting yeah. there doing nothing. That, I'm going to watch that person over the <laughs> character. No, it, Beat Saber no cam's fine. If it's a first person view and you're freaking crushing it, I'll watch you all day. Like, I love watching people who are amazing at Beat Saber. It is. There are certain games that I love watching, and like that's one. I love watching people play Beat Saber who are amazing. I love watching people play Mario who are amazing. Like, like I love Mario hacks like Kaizo Mario and all that crap. Like the people who like, you know, you have to like bounce off of 35 turtle shells and do this stupid thing, like all that crazy not you know, pixel perfect jumps, just stuff that in my I'm like, I don't know. I, I know that it would take me like a lifetime to like master one level, and they're just like banging out 20 levels and like no problem i don't know i find that fascinating and shmups i love watching people who are amazing at shmups because i think it's just amazing it's quite the I skill think, oh. i think that's the thing that like kills me about especially like kaiser mario and all, all this like absurdly hard stuff that you know people create like there's not enough time in the day and there's so many games to play there's no way i'm going to dedicate you know several months of my time to try to clear a level or something like that like i could mm. dude i could finish so many rpgs in that time but then if you speak to someone who's playing it then that's all they're focused on they don't want to play any other games they just want to grind that game become the best at it and you know good mm. on them. i find the same with track mania i don't play it but i love watching like the best players in the world play track mania mm-hmm. oh God, i kind of feel that way about speed running too honestly yeah, it hundred percent is because like speedrunners have spent years and years playing the same game, doing the exact same thing, getting that zero point zero one percent faster each time. And you really got to respect it. Um, I've been playing GSS so seriously for like almost nine months now, and there's speedrunners in this game. And then, like, I, I still can't fathom how they do some of the things that they do. It's just absolutely insane. But I'm sure ten years down the line, if I'm still playing. That'd just be the norm because you know you eventually your body gets used to it you you get those muscle movements used to it and things just become natural i know when you play a game for an ex, a extra long period of time and you'll see someone doing something you'll eventually reach out to that person how do you do this and you learn mm-hmm. those little skills and different things like that communities are good too like most communities share discoveries on speed running when you know glitches get found or new moves get discovered that you can do to improve times and different things like that yeah i think someone recently found another ocarina of time skip right like i think i saw that in my feed a couple of weeks ago i seen this morning they somehow managed world to make the game program. like less than 15 minutes the doom world records now drop from five to four seconds what to be doom <laughs> Yeah. What, what, how do you, what? Oh, I gotta see how that's doing. That. <laughs> Absurd. Like the OG Doom, it's four seconds now. <laughs> yeah, that's um fascinating to me. But I kind of get it because um this shit just shows you people are passionate about stuff first off. Like they love that. Like you you don't get that good at Mario if you don't just love Mario, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't get that good at shmups unless you just legitimately love it. Like, nobody puts that much time into anything if it's not, like, just something they truly are passionate about. Like, I don't know. I find that admirable. Um, and also, like, for me, I don't know about you guys, but, like, it was weird. Like, I didn't... When I was a kid and I played games, like, stuff like this, that didn't even cross my mind. Like, it was, like, possible. Like, I used to go to the arcade, and I'd play a shmup. I didn't think you could actually beat the damn game on, like, one quarter. I didn't think that was a thing. I didn't think that was humanly possible. Like, I just, like, I'm like, no, these games, you just die a lot. And that's how you, that's just how they are. Like, you just continue a lot, and you beat them if you're willing to pay five bucks. So how about, like, machines that had high scores? Because that that would be mm -hmm. similar. So... (laughs) It was weird at the arcades. Like you were, I was never there when the arc, the high score was put in the machine. So you'd see the high scores and you'd be like, I don't know how that's even possible if that's even true. But like, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. It's it's hard to describe. What Bullshit! I can't do that. It's just I. It, it's not that I couldn't do it. I just I never tried to because I didn't think it was humanly possible. It'd be like if you were like, do you want to fly with your wings? like a bird i'd be like no you can't do that that humans can't do that and then all of a sudden you see somebody just fly by hey 
you're like, holy shit, you can do that. That's actually, well, I'm going to try to practice. I didn't know. And so that's what happened with me with shmups is like, I, I started seeing like these one CC runs of people and I'm like, you can do that for real. Like you can actually get this good at these games and do that. I'm like, I got to try. And then like, I just kept doing it until I finally beat one. And like, it was such a good feeling and like just changed my whole like worldview of games. Like of why, I don't know. Like, they, it be like I. That's when I started getting addicted to like the challenge of certain games. Like regular games, like they're fun, but like now I'm like, no, I want it to be like some stupid thing where I'm like, I like no death runs, or I like what like one credit clears, or people who are like, I'm gonna beat the game without jumping, no jumping, just can run through this motherfucker, <laughs> like some stupid thing. Like I love that stuff now. Like I think it's fun. Um, and it's another way to like relive some of the old games too and go back and like breathe some life into old things if you try to do it. Like, you know, Contra is fun again if you're trying to beat it without cheating. Uh, like back in the day when I was a kid, we just put the code in and we beat it. And that was it. And the people like, did you beat it? I'm like, yeah. Now I would never say I beat the game unless I actually beat it. Like I didn't cheat at all. Like that's like actually beating it. You know what I mean? I'm into that, but I, I find my reasons different. I mm -hmm. find it's for um the euphoria you get when you do overcome these things. Like I love my Dark Souls series, and I love getting stuck on a boss, which sounds funny. But I love getting stuck on a boss, grinding it out, and finally beating that boss. And that feeling you get when you do, I, I can't get that from any other game. Oh, mm. so I, you can't. But it's it's very rare that you can get that feeling from other. I remember when I first started playing PUBG, it was really hard. And when I would win a game, I would get that feeling again. And that's what got mm -hmm. me into PUBG. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's an interesting getting that, like, it's almost like a sport euphoria. Like, I used to get it playing sport when I was a kid all the time. You know, you're in a race and you win the race or you're blah, 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 playing a rugby game or something. But in, in video games, it's different because most video games hold your hand and play along, blah, blah, blah. They don't kick you to the ground and push you when you're down and those ones that do when you do overcome them and you know you've been stuck on it for ages all your mates are stuck on it as well and you finally beat it doing the exact same shit that you always did but you just did a little bit better it feels amazing yeah i, I think that feeling like especially in like the, the realm of rpgs right seventh saga immediately comes to mind and that's it's a game that like hardly anyone says have ever finished because it's legitimately broken like it's literally programmed wrong right so getting through that like several years ago was that was that exact feeling of holy shit like i went through with like the worst fucking character i could have picked of course i picked the alien and like all of his stats are garbage and he has like the worst stat growth in the game, but you finally get to that final boss and you hear the music and you're pumped and the heart's racing. And you finally do that one thing that throws off all the RNG and like really like throws, throws the whole game for a loop and you finally beat it. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> like, and holy shit, I did this. Genuine like scream of let's fucking go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say or what you were talking about Dark Souls. Like, have you ever like, like, you know, freaking just like got profanity lace and tirade against someone after you beat it. And so you're like, yeah, that's right, you fell off my feet. You know? I do that all the time. Like, but I finally beat someone. That's like, it literally is like beating your worst enemy in real life. It feels so good. It's like, I actually had that moment happen yesterday in a game of Geo guess where I was, I just did a really good Brazil guess in a region that I've never seemed to get this one region that finally fucking got it. I won the game. I just got it. I went, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> feels good no one was watching feels and, good <laughs> um so that's funny the seven saga game i played that when i was a kid me and my brother had that we played that and like i never finished it not because i got stuck or anything it was just i never did and so i always remember being like i had like pretty fond memories of that game and like now i hear a lot of people being like it's like the most impossible game and it's so broken and so i'm like oh i'm glad i'm glad i walked away from that one in a little because i never because it does because yeah it's like a it's like a you're just one player and you don't get a party right you're just one one character the whole time right no, you do. You do get a partner. Like you get oh, a you partner, get one partner. You get like if you oh, don't, okay. if you don't pick Val Zoo as your partner, you're fucked. The whole game is screwed. But like mm -hmm. the fundamental problem with the game is like as you level up, 
the enemies level up more than you do. So their stat growth is better than your growth is ever going to be. So you have to like really balance out with, with the areas you're at, how far you can level because you can't over level. If you over level, you're fucked. Like there's, yeah, there's right. no way around it. Wrong. <laughs> wow. That's messed up. Yeah. I, I kind of like that mechanic. though. It so makes it a very unique, really interesting good. information. Like, title right like it's such a weird feeling to say that you beat a legitimately broken game yeah yeah um was it fact xanadu i think it's fact xanadu like that's another one of those games it's um there's an item in the game that's supposed to like have the i can't remember either you're supposed to double your damage or half the hp of the enemies or something like that but if you pick it up it does the opposite like the, it's complete opposite so it's like it like literally makes the game harder if you get this item and um like i never knew that as a kid and i got it every damn time i'm like cool got my jam <laughs> you know what i mean like but oh so stupid but yeah that's another one that was like it's like actually broken um oh god i can't remember it's like a games continue with that mechanic. or something elden ring have a thing in the game which i didn't know my first playthrough you're in the hub land and you talk to all the characters and one of them gives you a hug you don't realize it but this hug like puts this thing on you and you you have less health or the enemies are stronger or something until you like manually go into your inventory and remove it and i didn't know this the first time i played the game and i'm stuck on this boss and i've got this like extra hard mode on and i didn't even know <laughs> okay, that's hilarious dude. it does make for a great joke yeah 100 percent Sure, Miyazaki's watching Speak. people on Twitch go, look at this guy stuck and he's got the fucking thing on and he doesn't even realize. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Speaking of Souls, has anyone uh, played the Stellar Blade demo by chance? No, not yet. I'm definitely looking forward to playing it when it comes out, though. Have you played it? It is remarkable. Like... And, and the reason I bring it up to like transition off the Dark Souls thing is you can immediately, and I didn't know this till till the wife told me, she was like, you know, you can go in immediately from the start of the demo and take your armor off and like, look at, you know, this very flesh, like fleshy colored suit, right? Like, you know, very scantily clad, like kind of thing, eye candy sort of thing. And what it does is it basically makes the game into like a, like more like a Soulsborne game because you take like 50% more damage or something. And it's legitimately fun. You got no, armor? no, you're not faster or anything. Like oh, it, it just God. is, Hey, your reward for, you know, eye candy is the game is harder. Congratulations. <laughs> I kind of like that in a way. That's fun. Yeah, it's I a great like mechanic. That. It's like, a you want to be a little pervy? That's fine. But you know, you know I'm just going to be a little harder. You, know? you got to pay the price. It's, fair, it's a fair trade to be honest with you. I've seen some good receptions behind the that game and like the eye candy that they put in and blah 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 and people are like this is what we want in video games. Do this. <laughs> Just, let's it's, hope an, it so. it's quite an interesting thing that there's like people are like, Can you believe that dudes play video games? Number one. Oh my god. And number two, can you believe they like boobies and they like bombs? Can you believe? What? I know, right? How is what is going on? Like, where? What is going on? Like, yeah. I think the biggest shock to me was like, have you seen the IGN? I think it's IGN France article where they say, "Oh, this is just the male power fantasy," and these these dudes that made this game have never seen a woman. Meanwhile, like the main one of the main art directors is a female. It's it, the shit writes itself. It's hilarious. I recall that the girls in the game are actually like modeled after real people. Like they got real yeah, people. It's the, it's the main developer's wife. Scan their bodies and put them in the game, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like for some reason they don't believe that beautiful women exist. It's like for some. It's it's strange. It's like that representation matters, but only if it's ugly things. Nothing beautiful can be represented. We can't have anything nice. Only it has to be someone who's like deformed or missing a, a leg or in a wheelchair or has like a, you know, an extra eyeball. That's fine. We have to, we have to include that, but we can't have anything nice or beautiful. We can't have a beautiful woman that has to be excluded. We can't have women that. with large boobies do not exist. <laughs> that's what, that's what they say. 
it's preposterous and and you know and it's just like if you if you're trying to start a war between men liking boobs like you just you're gonna lose it's a it's a it, <laughs> it's it, it, it's just uh, it's a non-starter it's a non-starter and it's, it's a human natural instinct mm-hmm. like that's what your first thing from when you're a baby is to go to that and yes it's a natural instinct now i will say that like this is what I'll say to you. It's not like the most important thing in the world that like the girls are in the game are insanely hot or whatever. Like I played Returnal. You ever play Returnal? You didn't play that game? Mm-hmm. And the girl, they the, the main character, she's hideous. She's hideous. In my opinion, I just find the character design like hideous, like physically unattractive. But I love that game. So it's not like it ruined the game. I don't care. But let me just tell you something. If Returnal had a character in it that looked like the other girls i would have clearly enjoyed that more like that's just the truth like i don't see why like making characters less attractive on purpose is like what is that accomplished like i literally don't understand like what is the point like i don't well, they'd make multiple characters and let us pick we want to play as the really attractive or the really weird looking person we can okay so this is my this is like my this is what I, I was gonna make a video about this if I I was actually thinking about doing this, but like my solution to all of this is every game gets a woke slider. You know how they have a slider where you can like make yourself taller or you can make yourself shorter, you know what I mean? It could be a slider. So it's just so if you go like all the way to the right or whatever, it's just like you're like pure MAGA hat wearing red, white and like shooting American eagles, fucking just rah, rah, Mary. And then if you go the other way, it's nothing but rainbow flags and just cock rings and fucking <laughs> communist flags. And you just you can just make it whatever you guys want. So that way everyone can just have what they want. They can play the game they want to play and everyone can stop crying. You can just have it, whoever you can have all, all straight people on this end. And then everybody just this, this orgy, gay orgies on this end, however you guys want, <laughs> just have a slider. Then now we're I can see like Saints Row doing that or some edgy company like that. I think that would be fantastic. And if you're a normal human being, you won't even touch it. You'll just leave it where it is because you don't care. It'll be right in the middle. Like you could just play Mario like normal. But then if you want, you can play like super woke Mario. <laughs> super redneck Mario. <laughs> you know, just like you know, just like you know, toad with Antifa flags ah, and all that shit. And then you could have like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, me oh that one broke me <laughs> hey hey i i just want to make peace i just want to make peace between the, the everybody fighting about games it's the most stupidest <laughs> shit i've ever heard in my life everyone wants to fight about video games i'm like ah, nah dude um sorry yeah, yeah i use this shit to escape all of that i don't i don't want to see it right like <laughs> Keep Correct. all of keep all the things out of my games. Let me let me go into my little little corner of the universe and yeah, you know, escape everything in the real world. Yeah, exactly. I, if I wanted that shit, I'd keep scrolling on Twitter or Facebook or something. So I go to video games to escape reality. Mm-hmm. You know. Yes, yeah, so I would just this, go read Kotaku or something. This is this this is what I this is what I say. I don't want a bunch of reality injected into my fantasy. And I don't want a bunch of fantasy rejected into my reality. And I think there's the people who have it backwards. They seem to want reality to be cuckoo land. And they want games to be re- like, you know, political active. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's reverse all this. <laughs> Let's make the games and the fantasy and the TV shows just not have anything to do with modern day politics at all. And then in, in reality, let's try to keep like we're not like the people who are like, I'm a I'm a wood elf, and my pronouns are uh woof 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 doo and I'm a sprite from a, a magic jungle. Like people who say shit like this, I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? Like I'm like, we've lost the plot, people. Like you've gone too far. You don't live in reality anymore. We're like we've gone too far. We've lost the plot. That's all. I've started seeing videos, and I've had to look at them and be like, is this even real? Are these just staged these days? Of course, some of them are that bad yeah. that it's like, how do people even like believe this? Is it people in foreign countries who don't speak English properly and they're trying to like learn English through these videos, or like who who is watching this? And then you look at it, it's like fifty million views, and it's like clearly some staged thing. And it's just like, mm. it's so 
It's a great so many of them. So Facebook's the worst. I, I don't go on Facebook anymore. But every time I do, it's just like, what is this shit? I, I so one of the things I think that's going on, especially in gaming journalism right now, is that like as in as across the media in, in general is dying, not just games journalism, like print journalism, t, you know, regular TV, newspapers, magazines, like it's all go circling the drain, you know? And so like these people now, I feel like they don't even believe the shit that they're writing. They don't even believe this crazy woke shit that they're saying. Like they're just stirring the pot, trying to like shit stir to get like people talking about their website again, because that's the only type of attention they can get. Like nobody cares about them at all. So they come out and they'll just say absurd things. Just like, you know, like, you know, people, women are going to die because of Stella Blade. <laughs> no, they're not. No one is. No one's going to die. That is like, you're just saying wild things to get a reaction from people. It's just like, it's a, it's like purposefully absurd just so that normal people go, Oh my God, are you serious? And then they make videos and it's like a uh, free advertising. I, it's to me, that's, it, it has to be, it's too absurd. Some of the things that like I'm seeing now it's absurd. It's like, Oh God, what was the one the other day? Like, I don't even remember. It was like, somebody said something about the plot of Zelda being some absurd thing i can't even remember I can't, it was so stupid i can't even remember it my brain refused to store the information it was just too dumb um but yeah, yeah that's I think, my story yeah yeah i mean you've literally described what kotaku has done for the last 10 years right like i don't know i don't know if you follow um uh is it, is it grums i believe but uh, mm -hmm. i think you pointed out at the uh, at the, uh, the 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 game developers conference there's like a whole giant block to like all of these all of these ideologies in gaming and it's like what are what are we doing here like literally what are we doing here we're we're fueling the fire for all these websites to just be like let's you know let's change everything and then why can't we just focus on making games fun if you want to be an activist go be an activist you can be a political activist and you can also you can also make video games and be a political activist and keep that shit separate you you can do that look you can bring people that do have very strong you, political sides and make video games correct and don't push their political views on you their don't, viewers because they know they're aliating 50 percent of it like that's not the that. point you're making a game is to entertain people that is what your your job is you're not doing your job if you're doing an activism you're you're not doing your job correctly you are I don't know how it's just, you're, it's just not what we you're, you're supposed to do. It's like, it's like you could be a school teacher, right? And during the day, go to school and teach kids and be normal. And on the weekends, you could be in a brutal death metal band and pour blood all over your head and, and worship and light fires and be like, say that and be like crazy. It doesn't matter, but you shouldn't mix the two. You shouldn't do that at school with the kids. That's not your fucking job. So just because you love this thing and you love metal and you're a crazy motherfucker, that's fine. You just don't need to mix these two worlds. And that it's the same, these people, they just don't get it. They do not understand what their job is and that they can't mix their personal feelings and their personal interest and inject that shit into the games. It's like, that's not what we're here for. And I, Asmongold said something really poignant in one of his videos recently, which it's just so true. It's that, what I don't think any of these people understand is that they literally think that people need to be lectured and talked down to like four year olds for some reason. Like the very presumption that these people make that they need to tell you that you shouldn't be mean or you shouldn't be this or you shouldn't be that. Like, who the fuck do you think you are to tell me that? Like, child, I you haven't been on this planet for like half the amount of time as me, first of all. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And second of all, the very presumption that you need to say that to me is insane and condescending and rude. You're crazy. It'd be like if I went up to people all the time and I would be like, hey, I just want to remind you. You probably shouldn't like uh, beat people to death and rape people. Just you shouldn't do that. Just just to throw, I'm just letting you know. Just throwing that out there. You'd be like, OK, thanks. Why the hell are you telling me that? What the hell? What did I do? Why would you even suggest that? Why would you presume that I need to be told that? 
That's the big problem. That's why everybody hates all this crap. It's because nobody wants to be lectured to and talk like this. Like you, it's just, it's absurd. Oh my God. Like it's so condescending. It is so agree, condescending. Dude. Like get out of here, dude, go away. And so now a bunch of people who are just like, literally all they've said is they said, you know what? You guys can do whatever you want. You make whatever you, they're not even saying you want to make crazy games. You want to make all this ridiculous. Go ahead. All we want to do is write down what games you're working on so we don't give you money because we're tired of being talked to like this and we're tired of being treated this way as a consumer who pays your bills. Fuck you. I'm sick of paying, giving my money to people who clearly hate me and dislike me for some reason. You no, know I cannot I mean? wait for next year to come around and Grand Theft Auto to come out. Every single one of these people to like absolutely hate the game because it's everything that they don't want. <laughs> Good. It better be. I hope so. I hope Grand Theft Auto. From, from is the, the trailer, most I'm pretty sure ever. we're going to get a crude, you know, controversial game because that's what Rockstar do. I hope so. I do. I hope I, it's like I, so I, offensive. <laughs> I think that's one of the great things about like Japanese developers too, because they just don't give a shit. And that's one of the reasons I, was, I really love JRPGs. They don't play into all this stuff. They just make fucking good games that I can immerse a hundred hours in and be like, damn, that was real good. Yep. And be done with it. I can then go recommend them to to people and you know, they have a great time too, and we can stop doing all this other nonsense. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Look at Look at Tears of the Kingdom. There's not, nothing political at all in that game. It was just 200 hours of fucking awesome content. And that was it. <laughs> and then you've got the opposite of people in like Western com- like Western journalism trying to make problems out of like Dragon Quest XI, for example, is like people try to make problems about, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Um, his name escapes me right now for some reason. Silvando? Silvando, I believe. But like he's very flamboyant, but it never comes out in the game and says he's gay because they don't need to, right? Like he can just be flamboyant, and everybody's like getting behind him, and you know they're like he's our representation. It's like, but they literally never said any of that. So like you're just applying a label to a character that, quite frankly, like no no one said a word about. And I quite frankly, I love Silvando because he's so flamboyant and, and ridiculous. I used him in my party in the entire game. I love him to death. But it's not about like his label, it's about his character and how he interacts and his story. His story is so incredibly sad. And he's just he's just a fun character. Like you can write characters like this and make them interesting without slapping a label on them and saying, Cool, checkbox, done. And they I'm don't sure that Japan does not do it. Did. They made this character without the label. Like they just made the character fit all these different things. Yeah, they didn't, probably didn't even think about that, and it wasn't until you know these other people started saying, "Oh, blah blah blah," and this is that, and this is that. That the developer went, "Really? This is just a cool video game, and that's one of the characters in it. What do you mean?" <laughs> so that's a huge part of what separates like good diversity in games from other types of things is if you have a character who happens to be diverse, whatever the hell you label you want to put on it. If the story is good and the character is good, that's all that matters. What the problem is, is that a lot of the time, the story is about the character's identity. That is the story. And that's fucking boring. I don't like every, I don't like when I see a black character, sometimes I'm like, Oh God, here, when are we going to see the episode of the part where it's going to be like, well, here comes Mr. Racist comes along going to be real racist to the black person. Cause that's so hard for them to be like, Oh God, here it comes. And then it's like the gay character. Like this, their story is about they're gay and they get fired cause they're gay and they have to do this. Cause they're like, that is the story. You it's discriminated like, against because that. Exactly. Right. That's yeah. the story about old oh, man, blah, blah, blah. And that shit is played out. Like that was, it was a, fascinating story in 1994 dudes okay but like it's not in 2024 it is boring and so that's why people reject this crap and they're sick of it because they just know it's not going to be a good story it's going to be the same old lecturing nonsense that we've seen a million times where it's just always like character cut out like insert 
uh, MAGA hat wearing guy with the with the with the redneck shirt being like, hoo, 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 I'm gonna shoot you, you darn brown people. Or it's like, here we go. It's like always, always, always the same crap over and over again. And after it's just like, dude, I'm sick. I like of it, what right? I said before with the videos that I'm seeing on Facebook. I seen one yesterday and it was very similar mm. to what you just said. It was this little dark boy and he was in a wheelchair. It was an innocent kid, 13. Had an Xbox in his hand, and there was a white lady police officer being racist, and it was clearly staged, fake. She didn't even have proper police outfit on that I could tell, but you know they're portraying this for a different audience, and they're trying to get the clicks, and it had millions of views. And I'm watching this like, who is watching this, and how can you not see this is the most? For one, it's a ridiculous mm -hmm. story because they're portraying like the ultimate of this isn't going to happen but like, you could you can watch any modern show and in the first five minutes you can be like that guy's going to be the bad guy that girl's going to turn out to be a douchebag that person's going to be you can just tell from the way they cast the show who's going to be the bad guys and the good guys and what the plot's going to be like you could just tell like it's another one that i've i've talked about a million times like um if if you if there's a character who's like christian who has like a cross they're going to be crazy they're going to turn out to be the one that tries to burn everybody alive in the bus or drown the babies in the river because Jesus said so. They're always going to turn out to be crazy. Well always, like sense. every single thing, dude. It's so <laughs> stupid. I can't relate because I haven't watched a TV show in 15 years. <laughs> well, it's, it's the really same with movies, know. really. Like movies even today are super boring, but like you, you have to really dig for, for those really special films that take like, might might try to introduce a trope. And then turn it on its head. Like I just watched uh, Late Night with the Devil. Fantastic film. Starts to do a couple of really tropey things in the very beginning because it's a quote unquote possession movie. But like as you go on, the trope of possession is really not the main point of the film. And then by the time you get to the last like 20, 30 minutes, you're like, holy shit, this is something way fucking different. And it does it in a way that like introduces bits and pieces like in really short bursts and then it just smacks you in the face and says by the way here's your plot and it's just mind-blowing how good that film is nice i i can't say i watch movies anymore because I've, I've just been turned off them in the last decade or so but that sounds really good sorry i lost my audio all right do you guys want to talk about um emulation because it's just been announced that Apple are going to allow emulators on the iOS store, which is pretty big news. Considering Apple are the one company that you know, don't like doing any of this. It's, we're going to be playing Pokemon games on our iPhones. So. For how long? <laughs> how long before it gets shut down? Yeah, before we see uh, Nintendo take on Apple in a lawsuit. So, I mean, um, I mean I've had emulators on my Android for like years. Yeah, yeah, they're on Androids, and that's seems um, perfect. I always thought that was actually neat. Like, I remember that was like one of the first things I did, like when smartphones came out, is I put like a bunch of PS1 RPGs on my phone because I loved uh, RPGs. You didn't need a controller; you could actually play it with the touch screen, and it would be fine. You know what I mean? But like, you can play Mario that way. Trying to play with the stupid touch screen on your phone. You can play Stardew Valley like that. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough. <laughs> I ended up, um, so for a while, that's what I did. I played like all those games. And then I got one of those MOGA controllers. Have you ever seen those the little Bluetooth uh, things for your phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did that for a while. But then I realized um, if you game on your phone, the, uh, the battery dies very quickly. And so it just doesn't really work for me. It's not that great because I don't want my phone battery to be dead in three hours and be like, shit, now I'm like in the middle of the day with no phone. Or constantly be charging your phone to yeah. play games. When, when if you own consoles and PCs, what are you mm -hmm. doing playing games on your phone? Like, games on the phone are for people who don't have anything else. And then good on you. If, if you that's, that, that's all you got, then have fun. But if you got a console at home, play the console. <laughs> Come on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's neat if they're going to be on apples. I mean, that's cool. Um, you know, I, I'm for emulation. Like I support it. I'm a huge, uh, the, you know, as far, people always think because I'm into physical collecting, I like don't like digital games or I don't like emulation. And I'm not at all like that. Like I'm a huge fan of emulation because 
it's absurd how much these retro games cost. Like, it's just unreasonable to expect people to play, like, you know, the, the cost for these games. And I want people to play the games. So, like, I think it's cool. I hope kids do get emulators and throw them on their iPhones and decide to play some Nintendo games. I think that's awesome. And then it brings up a second point. When when games do get expensive, you can own them. But if you own a game that's $2,000, you probably won't want to play it because you don't, you're worried that you might scratch it or something. So you want to play the emulator. It like has that doubled edge mm-hmm. sword. That's true. Yeah. Like I um I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that's something that like recently I've even considered uh I, I really wanted to spin up another playthrough of Kuon and that game's like I don't know nine hundred dollars now and it's really ridiculous. Do I really want to drag my PS2 out? No, not really. Uh, I'll just throw it on the Steam Deck, which is a great emulation piece, by the way. Like mm. fantastic. Uh I've just played, uh, what is it, Forever Kingdom, I think, uh, which is, you know, adjacent to like a Dark Souls from the PS2. And it was, it was, it ran fine. It was great. I had a great time. I mean, the battery life again, kind of like you said with your phone, it's, it's not great, but like if I'm sitting here on the couch, right, I can just plug it's it up. It's a retro game. It's fine. The Steam Deck can handle retro pretty well. It's just, it sucks for modern games. Like, that's what's so funny. They're like, oh, you could play PS4 games on your Steam Deck. I'm like, yeah, for about 45 minutes. And then it melts all the hair off your testicles because it's 4,000 degrees. And then it dies because it's the battery dies. So there you go. And it's like, woo. So it's like a jet engine because it's like, oh, man, I remember like uh, my girlfriend couldn't even play Slime Rancher on the damn thing. It just couldn't handle it. It was like so hot. I was just, yeah, you could probably cook an egg on that thing. Yeah. That's so, wild. But, that would make a good video cooking an egg on a steam deck <laughs> it is great for shmups and it's great for retro like i emulate i, I primarily use it as a as an emulation for retro so like indie games it. work well on it and different things yeah like yeah like in binding of eyes give like dead cells there's lots of like stuff that work fine you just you know if you want to play huge open world triple a games like news it's not gonna do a great it's it it'll just die quick and it'll actually play it'll look great for like an hour then it'll die yeah and the, or you could gimp it you can go in and, and and you know nerf all the settings and it'll get a little bit but what's i don't know i'd rather like so i don't that's just not what i use my steam deck for i have my ps5 for anything graphically challenging that's like what i do like any game that's like new cutting edge like i really care about how it looks i play on the ps5 and then like i'll play like um indie games and like you know 8-bit 12 or 16-bit inspired games i play them on the switch or the steam deck yeah i'm gonna say plus the pc for modern games as well the steam deck is cracked though i highly recommend everyone get one though i played more like retro games in the last like year and a half since i bought that in, in a long time because it's just like i don't know it's fun just to throw up the nes library and be like you know what i will play ducktales too for a little while just toss it on there like it's different than like you said like going to get the console out hooking it off getting the control you know getting the cartridge like i'm lazy but if you're just get like, your own crt out of storage and- yeah but if it's yeah, that's screen. what I was going to say. Like having the CRT readily available in the room with you, uh, it just takes up a lot of space, right? Like I just mm-hmm. recently tossed out a CRT because the tubes were going bad, but like that's a whole nother problem. Am I going to go get another one to replace it just so I can pop the Super Nintendo on? No, probably not. And most modern TVs don't support anything lower than like 480 and all those consoles run on like 240 or less. So, uh eh. I'm just going to emulate it and call it a day. Yeah, spot on. And you, you can get adapters and stuff, but like I've tried that on my PS2 and it looks like shit. Dude, just and it responds like, like a better shit, version too. on the PC, emulating it. You take away the load times. You've got hard drives or SSDs to, as save files. So you don't have to worry about memory cards. Like, the load time is the biggest thing. I, I um, went to play Scarface the other day on the PS2 and I'm playing it and I'm like, yeah, this is crap. And I tried it on the PC. And I'm like, this is so much better. It like loads mm-hmm. in five seconds and looks great. And I can plug a controller in and use an Xbox controller if I want. And yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I can good. save state every time I get ready to fuck something up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
the it, we we my girlfriend and I we we played we like love Need for Speed. It was like the exact same thing. We threw the actual Need for Speed on a PS2 with like a pound cable on the HDMI and the load times we were just like oh, oh my god and it's just, it's killing us and then we throw it in the Steam Deck and first of all uh, you know, you can upscale them and make it 60 frames per second, make everything look freaking amazing. And so that alone was amazing. But the, the low times, oh, God, is that so much faster playing it that way? Just a million times better. So, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the emulation. I, I love Steam Decks. I, I tell everybody to get one. I think it's just like life changing. Also, like, I truly think that um, we're like in this golden area right now where you can get roms very easily i don't think that's going to stay that way no, like, I, agree with you. I agree i think that these companies are going to start getting pissier and pissier about it and like nintendo what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to release like a new nes classic with like another different 50 games on it and take down all the websites and they're going to keep doing shit like that to say like see we do sell these games we don't win they're going to and because of their stupid switch online service that they want people to push people so they're going to i'm just I just think it's going to get harder in the future to get them. Not that it'd be impossible if you're part of a good BitTorrent site. I'm sure you can get them or something. It's not going to be. They're out there. You know, they're not getting scrubbed from the internet. No, I like to relate it to music and um, movies. Mm -hmm. How easy was it to get music and movies 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. It was the easiest thing in the world to download all this shit for free. Today, it's not. Mm. It's I, I don't download this stuff for free. I pay the you know five bucks a month to get my music. Because mm -hmm. it's more convenient. But back in the day, I was downloading it all for free. I mm -hmm. feel like ROM emulation will be like that. You'll have PlayStation emulation store or Nintendo emulation store. Yeah. 99 yeah. cents for every game for download, something like that. For a month. Uh, I do I do quite miss the LimeWire days. And now it's just a shit coin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crosswire and, and now that was the shit. So downloading a four minute song, it took like an hour. And then you downloaded it, and it was actually that voice clip of Bill Clinton saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> but I did get a free MP3 from freemp3.com. I was like, no, get this shit out of oh here. God. I don't want this. <laughs> the clips of, like, Britney Spears or South Park or something. Oh, I've heard them all. <laughs> And just forget downloading a video. Like, you want to download a music video? Dude, fuck that. It was like a week. Because they'd be back on like a 56K modem, right? It was like, your estimated wait time is seven days. Like, nope. No thanks. I'm out. I'm going to go play RuneScape. The Where only the thing that can run off. Oh, I oh, lost you for a sec. Hey. Do you remember when we had like on and off peak data times? And it would be like, I'd have to wake up at 2 a.m. And you could download music until 6 a.m. Because that was the fast internet time. As soon as that 6 a.m. hit, the, the speed like cut down like 400% or something. <laughs> That's crazy. I'd literally be awake all night downloading music. And then I'd go to bed and like sleep all day. <laughs> it's like a 12-year-old on holidays. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, it would just, everything took a thousand years to download. Like I used to download shows. It would like take like a day to get an episode. But um, I yeah, that's just my point. Like I just uh, I don't know. I feel like if you have any interest at all in emulation at all, like I would get on it sooner than later. Fill up a few hard drives of ROMs that you like, just because easier to have them, better to have them now than not to have them later. Um, like I constantly go through my like, and that's another thing too. Like I don't know about you, but um uh curating my steam deck and finding games for that and downloading games and trying them out that's just as fun as collecting games in a lot of the ways like it's just as fun uh, of a hobby um it's i prefer obviously having physical games for all sorts of reasons but like i can try games out that i would never ever have a chance of playing because of emulation you know what i mean like i'm like not going to be buying a pal ps1 and buying a bunch of pal ps1 games to try them out at this point in my life you know what i'm saying like that's just not happening i'm not trying it. but i could try them all out on my steam deck and like if i really like a game i can order it physically and still play it on a pc through a disk drive 
like through duck station it works just like a playstation would so um i don't know i just i'm i'm a fan well, you know so i'm in there joe like emulation gives you a chance to play games that you can't like i played mb mm-hmm. nba elite 11 on my pc it's like a fifteen thousand dollar ps3 game that i'm never gonna own but i've played it and that's really fucking cool you know <laughs> If you want to play it too, you can emulate it, and it's it's a terrible game, but you can play it. <laughs> yeah, and I sometimes mean, games out there like that. Sometimes there's um there'll be a games that are very expensive, and like you might be like, I want this game, I want this in my collection, and then you just play it, and you're like, dude, fuck this game, this game's terrible. I do not want to play this game. <laughs> it does not live up to the hype. Oh my god! I'm so glad I didn't spend that much money on this game. I do not like it. Like that's happened to me. Or the that, opposite could happen, where I'd be like, "This game's expensive. I'm gonna try it out," and I'll be like, "Oh man, they write this is good. <laughs> I really should buy this. It's worth it." You done the the opposite, where you buy an expensive game and then you play it, and you're like, "Oh, this is shit." Exactly. I, that's what would happen normally. That shit right there. <laughs> mm. No, I don't want that to happen. I'm, 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 I'm. No, that's a bad feeling. I that's really not, wish I'm, I'm that I, w- I. Sorry, man. Sorry, go, man. I, I really wish that, like, I bought a copy of Kyle Flag Squadron, which it is stupid expensive. Like at the time that I bought it, I think that was like three or four years ago. It was a thousand dollars. It's like this is dumb. I had an opportunity to buy it. I said, yeah, fuck it, I'll buy it. Sure. And like I got home and I was like you know, pondering it and it's like maybe I should just play it. And I didn't have a Sega CD. I still don't have a Sega CD for that reason. Emulated it, and quite frankly, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Like it's fine, but there's no reason this should be a thousand dollars. And now it's like double or triple that cost. Like, nah, no thanks. I'm out. I feel the same way about Snatcher. I know that I'm gonna get like hate comments about that one, but. Mm-hmm. Snatcher, honestly, not a, not worth a thousand bucks. Not even probably worth the five hundred that I paid back in the day. It's okay. Well, I guess some of the reasons these games are expensive is because they're bad games, right? They're bad games at launch. Got a bad review. Mm-hmm. No one bought any copies. You know, the store struggled to sell out, and then because of that, it's become rare down the line. Like that that is a really common instance in video game collecting. Um, I know for me, I. Spent a lot of money on Africa for PS3. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this a go. Sounds cool. I like Pokemon Snap. You get African animals driving around Safari. This will be fun. It's not fun. You don't even get to drive the car. It, it's boring. It's like, like a rail train thing. And it's like you pull up to it. Press X to take a photo. I'm like, what? what? I, I just want freedom to like go and take in photos of whatever I want. But no, they've made it terrible. <laughs> no, Mario, you're gonna have okay. to go down to the drinking hole and take pictures of elephants while they're drinking water, and that's your mission for the day. Then you go back to your tent. I, I've played it recently too, and it's really not very good. Uh, and they they could have just made it really simple, and it would have been fun. But you know, they made it like you know these missions like that. And it's awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mario nailed it with Godzilla. Like Godzilla nailed it on the head. It's highly expensive, terrible game. Perfect. And then I've heard people who who will platinum the game. And it's like, worst experience of my gaming life was platinuming that game. <laughs> it's like, why did you do it? Uh, pride. You know, people are into weird, like, the passion. That's what I was talking about earlier. The passion. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, that's why, like, um, emulation can be a good thing. Now, if you're, you know, a true collector, it probably doesn't matter how good the game is. It's like that's different. There are like other my I I don't know. Like I always talk about like there's gamers, there's collectors, right? There's people who are both, and there's kind of people who lean more one way or the other. And like I still am fighting to be leaning more towards the gamer than the collector. I'm still in the fight that I still believe psychologically that I'm gonna play all these damn games. <laughs> it's not gonna happen but i just pretend okay so like um i try to like lean into like not buying games that are super expensive unless i actually love the game and i really want to have them in the collection and there are games like that there are still like 
I actually really liked um, the King's Quest games and the Shadow Tower games on PS1. Oh, like, I I, I want to own them. Like, and I it's funny because like I was like, oh, these games probably suck, and like I've played them, and I'm like, the controls are really awkward and they were really goofy. But like once I got used to them, I'm like, oh man, I'm having a lot of fun. Like I actually really like this. This is right up my alley because I like um, I like I'm a big RPG guy too. By the way, like huge RPG guy. But like I like. Um, some of the serious nerdy ones like i'd like ultimas and i like might and magic and i like the dungeon and dragons types ones the ones that are really stat heavy and they're not really flashy and it's a lot of math and stats and sheets and maps and papers and i like that nerdy crap and so like um i don't know i've always leaned towards like games like that um what type of like um I don't know. What, what, do you do you have like a specific type of RPG that you like more than others? I know it's kind of a hard thing, but if you're really into the genre, I think you kind of know what I mean. Like, do you into like the futuristic ones? Do you like uh, art, like turn-based ones? Do you like action ones? We like. It it typically tends to be the turn-based stuff that I'm, that I'm more of a fan of. Action RPGs are I don't know they feel kind of dime a dozen, and they're really easy to make very boring. Uh, it's it's hard to make a, a really truly good action rpg like turn-based stuff is like i'm kind of like you right like the more math the better the more st stat manipulation and equipment man man manipulation that we can mm -hmm. we can do like that is that is my crack mm -hmm. i need that in my the life more complex so, the level system is the better absolutely i do want to go back to your comment on shadow tower like heck, okay you said you said you played it yeah yeah i loved it i loved it dude I didn't know what to do most oh. of the time, but I loved it. That was creepy as hell. I did like the exploration, but like I, I still couldn't get over the fact that every time you swung your weapon, you lost your entire endurance meter. That drove me up the wall to the point where like after six or seven hours, I just kind of dropped it. I feel the same way about Kingsfield too. Like mm. all of that just seems it's oh, too slow for me. But I, I get the appreciation. You can yeah. see how that turned into the Soul series, though. Like it's, it uses similar. Oh, a hundred percent. They took them from these games. And... Kingsfield yeah, so... walked so that Dark Souls could run. Yeah, Demon yeah. Souls was a little like toddler growing up. Did things right. Did some things wrong. <laughs> yeah, in Shadow Tower, like it is very awkward. The controls and the fighting like i it's i do not blame people who don't like it it is very awkward but it was one of those things that i experienced it recently for the first time like maybe a year and a half ago like i'd never even heard of that game and i played it through emulation and like all i, I just i remember playing it and then being like dude if i had gotten this game on ps1 back in the day i would have been obsessed with this game i would have been playing it non-stop like for its time i would have freaking loved it um like but this was like back this is like when they did this like pre twin stick days guys this is before like the analog so like the uh you know it's a 3d game when you're using the regular ps1 with no analog so it's really awkward but if you can get over that hump and like it's oh, it's so cool you know what i loved about it too is like there's no music and I know that sounds weird. That's not sound like not like a good thing. Like most people are like, that's not a good thing. But it's so creepy in the game. Like you feel like you're in that stupid tower after a while. Because all you can hear is your footsteps and the monsters and things. It's like, it's really like atmospheric. Um, I don't know. I just like that game a lot. It is it really great like, ambience. Cool mm. To play it back in the day. But I didn't even hear about these games until I was an adult. I got into Soul series and I went, what other games did they make back in the day? I'd never heard of any mm. of them. Well, that's exactly what me too. That's that's the same thing I did. I didn't know they, they made those games. I kind of went back in the back catalog and I was like, ooh, what are these? And I was like, oh, they'll probably suck. And I was like, oh, damn. Oh, shit. How much are they? Oh, shit. Too expensive. <laughs> They're not that bad. Well, Shadow Tower is. That one's very expensive. Kings, Kingsfield, Kingsfield Power Region, you're looking at like $400. Oh, no, no, no. They're like 100 to 150 ish here if i want a copy i'm buying a japanese ps1 i'll buy the japanese ps <laughs> i think they have english because i'll buy them too did you know they got an extra kingsfield we didn't get sons of bitches so our kingsfield one is actually kingsfield two oh, interesting. so they got a kingsfield one that we never got so they have There's three four, 
Kingsfield games, right, in Japan. Yes, there's okay, one, two, and, and three, three on three PS1 on and two on PS2. On four, yeah, and there's only three in the West. That always and, confused me, so that makes sense. It's weird. Um, no, but it, I will, it was a lot of the... Uh, it made sense for back in the day, because back in the day, if you released a game in Japan, it was for the Japan audience. It wasn't for Western buyers. You know? So if they released a game in America at number two, but no one had heard of it before, they'd be like, where's number one? Well, number one's in Japan. It only plays in Japanese, so it's just easy to make it number one. Same, Final Fantasy did the same. You know? Oh, we got screwed out of tons of cool games. Makes me mad. All the translations we didn't get. But I guess that's kind of a neat thing they're doing now. Reggie shows off stuff like that all the time. They go like, oh, somebody it's easier today with thing. the technology that we've got and different things like that to... I mean, AI. Can That's just another really great plus for emulation, right? Like all these weird, you know, fan translations that we never got. I mean, I keep harping on the whole like Mother Three thing, right? Like we're never getting Mother Three. I played the fan translation. Fan translation was really good. Uh, it was it was a great translation, and yeah, we're never going to play it any other way. So screw it. Go out there and get it. Never say never. One day it'll be Mother Four. It's coming. <laughs> Earthbound cool. 2 or something. <laughs> Eventually, they will milk every franchise to death, yes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the um, the gaming industry would rather milk an old franchise than make a new IP. It's so much safer to you know, sell nostalgic to people than try and sell them a new product, even if you've got a brilliant idea. Well, we see so many remakes and remasters these days from big companies because it's like, you know, they got shareholders that they have to have their meetings by and they want profit. So they can be like, we got this new idea or this new character and it's going to be really cool. Or they can be like, we'll remaster The Last of Us 2 again. <laughs> and guess what they picked? It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> No, but honestly, Naughty Dog would have had that meeting with people, be like, you know, we've got ideas. And they picked the remaster of a, a game that freshly like came out like halfway oh, through the PS4 cycle. It's a wild. I thought it was a joke when I read that, but it wasn't. <laughs> Check the date; it's not April first. So yeah, I think that um, first of all, like they know that. If they so, oh my god, how do I put this? All right, so if they make new properties, right, and they make them the way they want to make them, they know no one will buy them, <laughs> no one will buy their stuff. So, what they like to do is they like to take established properties and they use them as a skin suit and they make you think that you're going to buy something in that property and then they make the game they want to make and they put a fresh coat of paint on it to make it kind of in the same world as what you used to like and then they try to sell it to you and then the way i describe this is if you ever seen them have you ever seen the it's like a meme or a gif or, I don't know, it's like a baby and they, the baby's eating out of a straw and they make it look like the baby's eating out of this delicious applesauce but they actually oh, like, are really hiding it them. and it's yeah, it's yeah. actually like this disgusting shit the baby the ate. That they need to take or something Correct. And so that's basically what the gaming industry has been for the last three years as we are the babies going, oh, we're going to have some applesauce. And they go <laughs> and they feed us the shit that they've disguised as the stuff that we like. And then you go, oh, this is gross. Yuck. Uh, what is this? This doesn't taste like my delicious thing that I've been eating my whole life. This I is gross. Me. What is this crap? And then um, there definitely been some good remakes yeah. that we've gotten like i always sure. bring up the crash and the spyro and there's been some oh, that hd remaster blew me away fine. 100%. that's fine but you know what i'm trying to say i'm I yeah, no, more i i, I do agree with you the most. Like, yeah we don't need a game that is on ps4 that has a free upgrade on ps5 to have a remake we don't need that that is ridiculous it's absolutely absurd to remaster a ps4 game that well, isn't a bad game. There's nothing wrong with that version of The Last of Us. No. Well, I did. I think The Last of Us 2 didn't make as much money as they, even close to what they thought it was going to make. And so I think that's one of the reasons they remastered it and try to resell it again. It's just a way to make more money 
you know it's the same thing like how nintendo released everything on the wii u again they're like you didn't buy it that time will you buy it this time yeah but it makes more sense because it's not backwards compatible system but you know you can literally put the ps4 version into a ps5 and it gives you the upgrade and you can play it like it's wild to me that, is that version will be in the shops for like 20 bucks and then i'll have the 60 dollar version that's the same game but if you don't have the 4k tv and you're not even going to notice the differences you know that's true too but i would still waiting on my much. xenoblade x port nintendo come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think this if you want to round off this if the switch 2 is coming out i would really like the switch to get the xenoblade chronicles x like you said that's you come on we got all the other three you might as well just, yeah yeah come on just do it. It. and this, i feel the exact same way, way about wind waker and twilight princess come on come on just put it on there what are you doing just unless you're remaking it for some reason which why would you like you don't need to like when wind waker is perfect don't ever just leave it alone just re-release it the way it is like oh, I, don't, I, I don't i don't mm. want it to update it like i like the way it looks just leave it alone it's beautiful the way it is twilight princess sure i guess you could does it need it no uh but yeah i'd like those three games in particular to be released on the switch for sure yeah you know what i would really I love if they would remake switch. wind waker Please win, remake Wind Waker and take out the crappy fetch quest at the end of the game for the Triforce pieces. That would make the game perfect. <laughs> yeah. That would be good. Cool. Um, Actually, it brings up a good point that the remastered Last of Us 2 is most likely to try and get people who are watching the TV show into the game, which, which makes sense. No, the TV sense. shows, I mean, yeah. I didn't even think about that. It's just a, Does that mean we're going to get a remaster of Fallout 4 for the TV show then? Which, quite frankly, is probably my least favorite Fallout of the of the set. But you know, I, it makes the I most really sense in a modern way. I, I I got into that. I put like two hundred hours into it. I built a base and went after like all the collectibles, and I really got into Fallout Four. Never played any of the DLC though. But how many settlements did you help? <laughs> oh, I I pretty much did everything. Yeah, I, like I generally put like three hundred hours into that game. I had huge bases built and yeah it was absurd <laughs> but i played fallout 4 in 2014 on an xbox one it was my first new console and i was pretty blown away like i went from ps3 to that and i felt like this is cool i'd never played an old a fallout game to it i only played skyrim before it was my first fallout game then i tried new vegas and to me new vegas was too outdated i couldn't play it Oh, everyone says that's the best one. Yeah, I couldn't get into I, it. I haven't played them, so it's got the PS3 like um, yellowy <laughs> graphics that's famous through that era <laughs> and slow yeah, loading times. And... Uh, my buddy played three all the time, and like he was into the mo modding. I guess you mod that game a lot, <laughs> and he literally had the game modded, so he had like fifteen waifus following him around. <laughs> It's just like this little harem of, of waifus go everywhere he went. And they all had like bazookas and samurai swords and they had all this crazy shit. And he's like, that's just my army of waifus. So I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, this is just, I'm on. I don't know. Don't I'm like, hey, man, you play it however you want. But I just thought that was hilarious, dude. Like, like you would just like stand there and you'd be like, attack children. And they'd be like, oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> so awesome. <dude. laughs> and then he, um, same kid, like, uh, he made a mod in Skyrim that you could, like, turn into a Dragon Ball Z character. You could be a Dragon Ball Z character and, like, literally, like, do, like, the Hami 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 Hami. Insane mods. Yeah, he, he, he made it. Tank engine. Or... Yeah, it was awesome. You could nuke towns and stuff, like, as a Dragon Ball Z character. Uh, <laughs> Krillum. He, he made Krillum. You could be Krillum. The little ball guy, That's right? Cool. Yeah. Do you guys like to play the, um, the Figsy Quiz? Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's do it. So, before we get into the quiz, I need to talk to chat because. It's been two weeks, and you guys still haven't got the question. So me and Pavel have been chatting, and we're going to keep the question the same, but we've added a hint. So 
a little bit easier. So chat, you got the same question again, but we do have an extra hint. Good luck. You guys have to name the video game from the photos. Now, while you guys are thinking about this, let's get into the quiz. So this quiz is um, like the last show. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you guys a photo. It's a GIF. And every, like, five seconds, the GIF will reveal more of the image. Uh, I think after, like, a minute, it will eventually reveal the cover. But the idea is you guys are going to try and guess the game. First person to correctly guess it gets the point. If you were incorrect, you will be locked out until the clip finishes. So the other person will have the full minute to answer. Uh, so let's get into the first one. Good luck, guys. If you get it from that, I'm calling you as cheaters. Jaws! <laughs> yeah. no, I have no idea. Skate! <laughs> That is correct. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, is that the little picture in the corner getting bigger? <laughs> it I was sketch waiting. free, but I'm paying that. Well done. Um, no, hey, no, that's fine. I didn't even realize that was the photo. I didn't. Yeah. I, thought I was waiting for something to appear. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got the answer. You're like, what? I thought he was. <laughs> that's the wheel. Eventually, the cover will pop up. All right, second one. Yeah. Okay. God, this looks like all the Atari games I've been playing this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. This is just this is just Tetris at this point. Come on. Okay. All right. Is that a penis? Oh wait, no. Sorry. Metroid. No Metroid. Joe is locked out. Shit. so much easier when you can just wait for it to fill in yeah it just looks like something i threw up like last week after i ate i don't know <laughs> we'll slowly reveal more and more of you ah, a bit of earthworm jim <laughs> earthworm jim earthworm jim is correct morgan takes another point Fuck. you really start to see it now all right mm. next question Starting out tough. <sighs> yep, still no idea. Mm. Uh, 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 Ghosts and Goblins. Super Ghosts and Goblins is correct. Joe Let's go. Me. Let's go. All right, next one. Majora's Mask. Oh, 3D. shit. That was the team. Zelda that Majora's is, Mask is correct. Well that was done. Good. The purple. <laughs> ah, that was really good. And you can see the 3DS case. All it's right. That was yeah, like, the, color, the color is it iconic. Is, it is. I immediately was like, oh, I know that. <laughs> he got it quick. All right. Next one. That was good. Uh, looks like my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even care if I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um that's the EA logo, I think. Uh. No, Konami. It's Konami. PlayStation in the bottom right. I don't fucking know what this game is. I, I, I literally don't know. <laughs> I think it's the Japanese version too. No. Oh, Silent Hill 2. Yeah, there you go. I'll pay that. It was there Silent it Hill 1. Ah, fair enough. Sure. Yeah, I've never, I definitely don't know that cover. I didn't as long that. as it's not Joe's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. <laughs> uh... Nope, you got me. Uh, no, I do. Yeah, I feel like these are so much harder. The pixelated ones, like the 
I don't know. The ones where it just enar- enlarges the piece of the image is are so much easier. I'm not sure. Unless, unless it's Zell, unless it's Majora's Mask, and then you're like, <laughs> <laughs> um. It's funny how like colored patterns you've seen like on the game, like that shit. You know, you could tell we we've looked at these covers too much if you could get them. Uh, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah. I heard Tony Hawk from Joe first. Let's go. So you, Good stuff. Can you, can you tell me the system? Uh, yeah. N64. Not the N64. The yeah, N-Gage. It was the N-Gage, correct. Ah, oh, whatever. Since the, right. I got to name the system now, too? God. That wasn't for the point. I was just curious. All, all right, right. Next all one. Right. That also looks like my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Looks kind of like a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> Shit. Um... <laughs> um, some sort of Loco Roco. Some Loco of... Roco on PS4 Pokemon? is correct. Nice oh, job. Killing it. This guy's a ringer. All right, next one. Mm-hmm. Drake and Guard yes. Three. Oh my god, <laughs> it's on oh, fire! Drake I was gonna say. Three. I was going to say Castlevania, uh, Lords of Shadow 2, for some reason. It's good for you. All right, final one. That that, that was like two seconds. That was, that was amazing, dude. I kind of cover that. It's one of my... my it was covers. a big splotch of blue. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking iconic <laughs> cover. All right. Last Could have very easily been the Smurfs the game. Oh, shit. Well, it's a PS4 game, I'm thinking. Hmm. Uh, seven days to die. Joe is locked out. It's incorrect. Yeah, whatever, dudes. I gotta be quick. Oh, it's freaking uh, evolve. I don't give a shit. Not evolve. No. Is that Metal Gear Solid Five? Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, well done. Bob Morgan smashed this week. Final scores ended on Joe. Two points, but today's winner on seven points is Morgan. Well done. <laughs> I'm just checking if anyone's got the chat question. I don't believe anyone has. So we will leave that question until someone gets it. I'll just show you guys once again. That's all I can think of is that song. Can I get you guys any um, pickups to show off this week? I got stuff. Let me show them some stuff. I got stuff. Yeah, I got stuff. some stuff. All right. So this first game, fresh off the boat, all the way from ye old Australia. Figsy's not even here. Where'd you go? God damn it. This came from you. And he's not even here. This is the game I've been waiting for Figsy for like freaking God knows how long. So anyway, this is uh this is check in seven, as you can see. Um, this is part of my VR collection, one of the few things that I still need for my PlayStation VR collection. And basically it's just an alternate cover. Um, in the U.S., we got a different cover for Tekken 7. That's kind of boring. Um, I just love this one right here. I so this hear cover... you, I was... yeah, so... <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so this finally came from uh, from you and from Clean. So thank you both very much uh, for helping me get this. This cover got released only in Australia and in Japan. And then it's on the Steelbook, I think, too. There's a Steelbook. I was going to say, you need the Steelbook one. still, man. Yeah, but see, yeah, I don't my my VR collection. It just I only want things that like are banded for the VR. So uh, the steel, yeah, the steel book doesn't really. It's just a steel book, so it's cool. I would like to have it just because it's a fucking cool steel book. But I don't need it for the VR set. For the VR set, I just wanted to have a copy of this cover. 
And I didn't want the Japanese one. I wanted one with English. And so I got the Australian one. So this is like one of the very few Australian games that I own because, yeah, because of stuff like this. Why is there a big M on it? That's going to drive me crazy. None of my other games <laughs> have a big M on it. So what's the VR mode for Tekken 7? I'm not familiar. I don't play a lot of fighting games, unfortunately. Um, So it's literally like you just um view the fight in like in a VR 3D setting. Like you're like, instead of just like watching it like this, you're like above it, I think. And you're like watching it happen. Like you're in the room. That's it's nothing cool. special. It's cool, but it's not like um, you're not like first person freaking thrown, you know, fighting this gen or anything like that. You just watch the game from like in the game. Oh, okay, that would have been sick if you could watch it from Jin's point of view. If you're playing as him, just getting the shit beat out of you, like <laughs> that yeah, first been person. Yeah, that would have been hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, you know, because every perv in the ground would just lie on the ground and look up at Nina's crotch, be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> no, dude. Oh been. no, I lost again. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um. So, so that game I bought and had a ship to Figsy's house in Australia, and he mailed it to uh, Clean, a guest who's been on the show, and Clean mailed it to me. So it's been all around the world that that game. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. But um, Clean had some other games, and he was just like, "Hey, you want to buy this off me too?" And because I've been collecting like a lot of fighting games, and he had a copy of SNK Heroines. Oh yeah, Tag Team Frenzy, the uh, English nice. Asian version. So this is like the 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 middle expensive version of this game. So like there's the Japanese version is the cheapest, but I don't think it has English and it's like 30 to 40 bucks. This version um, is the Asian English version and it goes for like, I'm going to say like 75 to like 150, depending on the condition of it, somewhere around there. And then the American version, the ESRB version, is like, I guess it's the rarest one. I don't know, or it's the most sought it's after. Not. But the PAL version is $500. It's the most expensive. Oh, okay. So I haven't seen the PAL version at all. I haven't even seen the PAL version. It is number so one in expensive PS4 games. That's wild. So, so yeah, so this is the third most expensive then. So the ERC, the ERC, ugh, ESRB version is like it goes to like two hundred ish, two fifty if it's new, sealed. Like it's very expensive. And now you're telling me the PAL one's like five hundred. Oh my god! So yeah, that's last wild. time I looked, you could still buy the collector's edition brand new from the website. I don't know if it's still in stock. Oh, that's yeah, cool. You can still get the game brand new from the website, or buy it on eBay for like twice the price. Yeah. Well, either way, <laughs> Clean did not charge me. Five hundred dollars or anything like it was very reasonable. So thank you very much, sir. I'm happy to have this game in my collection. Um, very nice. And in case you don't know what this game is, it's uh, yeah, like um, the SNK heroes, but like all reimagined as uh, waifus. So you know, there you go. Good stuff. Um, so then I got some schmoops from Red Art Games. Got Shina Ruby. These are the deluxe editions. I like those stickers. Yeah, dude. The, 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 I I love them, but like they're on the outside, so like it makes me. Uh, you can't open them. them now. Yeah, I'll probably just buy the game digitally. <laughs> so I'm like a loser, <laughs> and I'll play it like that. But yeah, this is a it's a, it's a shmup. What's interesting about this shmup though is this is um was designed with a 16 by nine now aspect ratio in mind. So like most shmups are not designed that way. They're designed for, you know, the old, the old vertical screens and stuff like that. Um, so this was kind of neat, um, but it doesn't have like a, a Tate mode like the, that, like cause of that. So some people don't like that, but it's, a, it's a, it's pretty cool. It's a different, I'm like a big supporter of any new shmup that comes out. So uh, I would definitely check it out. And then if you get the deluxe, Edition, it comes with like these little standy things. Dude, do I have any around here? Crap, I don't know what I did with them. Uh, it comes with like a little, like, like I don't even know. Standy is the only thing I can think of to call it. Shoot, where is it? I got two of them and I don't know where they are. Oh, here we go. No, so that's what it looks like. And then that comes on like a stand. So you pop that open and then you stick her in it. 
Oh, that's that's pretty nice. Was, did that was that like free of charge or? Yeah, yeah. So if you order oh. the deluxe edition, you get them for free. And since I ordered, uh, you know, the sh- the Switch and the PS4, I got two of them. That is one oh. good thing that like Red Art and Strictly and all those all those companies tend to do is give you all these little extra little tidbits with with your games, even if it's just yeah, simple, yeah. something simple like a postcard or something. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Yeah, I have a f- I foresee like I always tell my girlfriend that like um like so the car- the little extras those will be worth more than the games down the future. Like that sort of stuff is like it's always like, you know, the map costs a, a fortune. If it comes with a button, it's worth a cost of fortune. That's how collecting is. Like all those little extra things end up being the things that cost the most. But it's not so much they individually cost, but it'll be like the complete edition is $200. But if you want it with the map, it's two hundred and fifty dollars, and then the pins as well, three hundred dollars. Exactly. Like when I sold the copy of the coma, I had all the pre-order bonuses. I got like three hundred and fifty dollars for it. You know, mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. But you can exactly. buy copies for two hundred bucks without all that extra stuff, and you still Correct. get the game. But yeah. that's that's what I'm like. Don't throw away that stuff. Don't sleep on that stuff. Like those little postcards they come with. If a postcard comes with it and it's game specific. You better keep that. Like, if it's just like, just says, hey, strictly limited, then maybe not. But if it's like a picture of the game that you just bought, you should keep that because that's probably going to be worth something down the line. Not, you know, maybe not thousands of dollars, but it'll be worth 50 bucks or something, like you said, like 100 bucks. Or it could be the instance of if you're trying to sell it and there's two copies online, there might be many buyers. The buyer's going to buy the complete one, not your one. And you'll just be stuck with this game you can't sell. Correct. Then there's also this stuff that like even pre-order bonuses. I know that like it, it's kind of volatile, right? Because if it's a really popular game, it's probably not going to be worth shit. But something like uh, I had recently Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. They did a uh, paper craft set that you could get as a pre-order bonus. I sold that stupid paper craft set for like a hundred dollars for no for literally nothing. I got it for that's, nothing. And that's dope, dude. Steelbooks that come with games for free can sometimes be worth more than the game itself. It's crazy. And it's like you can't even buy these steelbooks because they were given to GameStop for free and they have oh, like 20 of them. It's just look at the puppy. Screw the let's not show off games. Look at the puppy. Hello, baby. He's the star of the show right there. What a cutie. Oh, you smile. Yeah, whoa. Oh, did you see yeah. a phone this week and a new chew toy? And... <laughs> what a happy dog. All right. God. She wasn't feeling the best. That's why I went and got her. Oh, she's cute as hell, man. Like, I, it's distracting. Um, so anyway, I think, was it Mort from Mort's Garage who suggested this game? Somebody on the show recently suggested this game. Um, so I picked it up. Immortals of Avenim and Avenine, Av- Avenine in them. Avium? Avenium? Avenium? Avril Levine? Immortals of Avril Levine? Um, it's. Okay, yeah, I, I swear, I thought it was like a, a 5v5, like Overwatch type game. I had no idea, but he said, no, this is like a single person FPS like uh, type game, but it's like magic, like Heretic or Hexen or something like that. And I love those. I love he- Heretic and Hexen back in the day. Like I was huge on those games. So I'm totally going to play this. I think I might play this right at, uh, next after I finish Final Fantasy because I, I want to, I play Final Fantasy 16 right into rebirth and i just need an rpg break i need a, i need to like i want to blow shit up for a little while you know what i mean i just want to see some some heads roll so yeah i grabbed Mario this, this a lot of bracelet from the last of us two collector's edition is incredibly expensive and i'm sure that's because mm-hmm. half the people that bought it put the bracelet on and worn it and then if they sold it it's missing that bracelet and it's like if you ever get a t-shirt in a collector's edition that's right. Like, there'll be so many of them on eBay with the t-shirt missing because people wear that stuff. And you know, a lot of people who buy these things aren't collectors. Never opening this shirt, bro. Never. Keeping it. You know forever. the Metal Gear Solid limited edition? I bought mm-hmm. two of them, kept one of the t-shirts, sold it all individually, ended up making more money from how much it cost me, and I got a t-shirt to keep. That's dope. <laughs> well, it's got a cool steel book that goes for like 200 bucks. And it's like a three hundred dollar collector's edition, and there's a art book inside. Plus, the game's fifty dollars as well, so it's quite a good deal. The collector's edition, the limited edition. That's sick, dude. Yeah, I, um, you know, you can be pretty smart about that. Like, I don't want to give anyone any bad ideas, but like, let's say you got 
you know, the this red switch, you know what I mean? Like the red Mario switch or whatever. Oh my god, I'm gonna break things. You know what I'm talking about, the red switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you like to sell the so, Joy Cons. Yeah. So if you just sell this thing the way it is, like you'll make like 250 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever. But if you sold just this piece and then just the Joy Cons and then just the dock, if you sell them all separately, you'll get $400 if you sell it that way. Because you could sell just the Joy Cons for like 100 to 100, you know, 20 bucks. You could sell just this piece for like 150, 200 bucks, you know, or whatever. Like if you, if you, if you want to do it. If you're patient, but then the reason behind that is because the people that buying it don't want to own the switch. They literally just want the Joy Cons, and Joy Cons regularly go for that much, mm -hmm. so they're used to paying that price. Yeah, or or like um, somebody will have like found found a switch at a yard sale that has everything but the Joy Cons, and so all they need is the Joy Cons, and so you know to them they're like all right 100 bucks all right i'll do it or or they will have everything but the dock that shit happens all the time people will sell still guys sell switches with no docks and stuff like that i'm like i don't know why people people do but yeah you can you know you can make a lot of money like this uh that red switch comes with a special blue joy con holder you know you can make the little controllers out of the joy cons you know what i'm talking about like the little plastic pieces that the joy con slide in and you can so like yeah. that thing's like forty bucks by itself. Just that little blue thing's like forty bucks to get one. It's like what the fuck? That's the All piece right. that's usually just black, right? Yeah, it's usually just black, but this this specific one comes. It's blue. Cause it's the Mario one, so that right. one is worth more. If it's like, uh, it's not ten dollars. It's forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it was the black one, you could find them a million of them for nothing. All right, so last, so I just got a couple of movies. I just really want to go over quick. So I got a uh, American Werewolf in London, Londonderry on 4K. Uh, it's like the best, one of the best movies ever made. If you've never seen this movie, it's absolutely incredible. All right, uh, movies are usually pretty good. Yeah, so this is like my favorite type of horror movie because it's a horror movie, but it's kind of funny at the same time. Like it's creepy and it's dark and it's depressing and it's still a very horror-y, but it's also kind of funny. And like he has like his best friend is like um, a ghost who follows him around because he murdered him. And like that's the thing, like if you murder someone like their ghosts follow you around and give you shit. They're like, I can't believe you murdered me, you prick. Like, which I always thought that was a funny uh, thing. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just think Everything we've been through, you killed me? <laughs> yeah, I just think that and it'd be funny to have ghosts follow you around all the time. We were like mad at you. We we're like, you son of a bitch. How dare you? I don't know. I just, I, I just like that concept. I thought that was really funny. And so then uh, I've been. Um, I'm kind of getting back into anime a little bit, a little bit. I'm like, I, I don't know much about it. And I'm um, but I, I, I definitely remember like a lot of the ones I used to watch back in the day. So I'm trying to pick up some of those. And uh, apparently I was a sick fuck because all the ones I like are fucking weird. So I got this one, Wicked City. I don't know if you've ever seen this one. It looks really nice. ever heard of it. Do this classic. Can Can't say I've ever heard of it. Uh, it's just a slip cover or whatever. Uh, this, this is pretty old, but like um, it's iconic, man. It's like super dark, super gory. Um, it's like about like a, the world where like humans and demons live together and they have like a truce. But like the truce gets broken, and the demons, you know, they do bad things because they're demons. And there's a there's a woman who has like a vagina monster with the teeth. You know, I'm talking with vagina dentate, the teeth of vagina monsters. So that was like the first I time I ever the movie saw that. Teeth, and it was yeah. very traumatic. <laughs> okay, so that was that movie that that this was like the this was like in the 80s they had like that. I got like, it. Yeah. It's just it's just it's an awesome movie. It's wicked fucked up. I would highly recommend it if you've never seen it. And I've never seen this one, but apparently this is from the same director. And I was looking up ones that I was going to pick up, and it looked awesome. It's called Goku Midnight Eye. And um, I don't know much about it, but it's basically the same director, so I'm assuming it's wicked fucked up. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like a classic detective uh, type story or whatever. But it just looks really messed up. So I don't know. Apparently I like really gory, creepy, violent animes yeah but like it's funny because like i looked up like a lot of the animes i like and like i kept getting lists like top 10 most fucked up animes top 10 most violent animes 
things you shouldn't show people. Things that gave us nightmares. I'm like, oh, okay. Because like, all the things I like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all my pickups. I haven't got any pickups, but I got more PS1 games to show you guys. Let's do it. Um, so I believe we're up to the letter V now. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming up to an absolute classic series. I played the hell out of this one. Uh, racing game that I do love, and that is V Rally. How good was V Rally back? Subaru versus the Mitsubishi. Oh, so good. So iconic. So. B Rally and Colin McCraig were like the racing games back in the day. Like, these are the need for speed. In games. PS1 was a racing beast. Yeah. Oh, so many good races. Oh, oh my God. And uh, now we have a JRPG that's a banger. Vagrant Story. Oh, that is a banger. Square Soft on it. I still haven't played it. I only um, picked this up last year uh, from a good friend, Jared, who sold a lot of his um, PS1 JRPG collection. So really happy to have it in the collection. It's quite a pricey game. It's in beautiful condition. The artwork looks absolutely lovely. I thought that game was in the news recently. Is that getting, is that getting released in a compilation or some shit like that? Possibly. That'd be good. Hmm. I don't know. I could be crazy. Uh, we have another racing game, one I didn't play. And this one is Vanishing Point. I couldn't say too much about this one. Have you heard of this one before, Joe? Mm, no. It's like BMWs and stuff in the game. It's kind of cool. a, it's a claim. It's probably pretty decent. Like we were saying before, there's so many races on the PS1. There's a million. This is cool. Uh, here we have Viewpoint. Oh, that game's awesome. Beautiful artwork on the front. So I'm trying to get that. Uh, I would like, there's a long box version of that in the US. It's like a, sh- it's a shmup. It's like Zaxxon. If you guys are like really old and know what the hell Zaxxon is, <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's like that. Uh, God, I don't know. What, what's the perspective? I don't know what to, I don't know what to call it. It's like a gosh, what is that? What they call seriously it? test your trigger finger. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah, I think that's when you don't you can't like you have to shoot every time with the button, I believe. Which is another reason one of my favorite I like series emulators. Emulators um, are so good for shmups. You don't have to hit the fucking buttons. You can just hold the button down, set turbos and shit. Yeah, dude. Save yourself your thumb. So I never played the Twisted Metal games growing up. However, I did play these. And that was the Vigilant 8 and Vigilant 8 Second Offense. Now, this is the one I owned as a kid. Not this copy, but I owned this mm-hmm. game. It wasn't the Black Label, so I had to rebuy the Black Label version. Um, they're quite expensive today, these games. And they are fantastic. Like, absolutely brilliant games. Um, I would say they kind of hold up. Me and Andy played them. Two-player wasn't that fun, but single-player held up, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Highly recommend. Isometric. Them. Thank you, Cyrus. I would love to see a new Vigilant Age. So good. I would love to see a new one of those as well. Or a new Twisted Metal. No, I like I said, I bought I bought Carmageddon Max Damage the other day just because I wanted to play a fucking car combat game. Like I want I love that type of stuff. So uh, so here we have Wild Nine. So that was made by the same team that made um earthworm gym like a platformer it's a 2d action platformer where you have like a whip and it's it's like sort of it's very like i said it's like the it's sort of like the gameplay is kind of like earthworm gym but not the like the story or the style or anything it's not it's part of a lot of like 200 ps1 games i bought and it was complete so it ended up in the collection it's not a bad game i i own it it's it's fun uh, here we got another banger, like real banger. And this came from the same lot of JRPGs I bought last year. And that is Wild Arms. Oh, hell yeah. That's a great game. Amazing title. I'd love to see a new version or a remaster or something. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that, there's six of those games at least. Seven Fantastic artwork. The PSP, but... Yeah. It's good stuff. I have not played all of them. 
I don't believe I own any of them on the PS2. This is the only one I've got. So it's... Yeah, one and two on PS1, and then the rest are on PS2. And there's a PSP game that's pretty expensive too. I guess this next one's kind of similar to the Destruction Derby genre. And this is WDL, World Destruction League, Thunder Tanks. It's like a Destruction Derby game with tanks. 3DO, baby. That looks all right. I like games like that. I like tank games. That's fun. World of Tanks is fun. I've been playing Battlezone on the Atari. Shit's intense, bros. And you made a sequel. This is World Defense League War Jets. This is like, yeah, like, reminds me of like the flyer jets from Star Wars that Anakin used to race in. <laughs> That was cool. Pretty cool, though. And final one for today, we have World's Scariest Police Chase. It's a classic, like, um, cat and mouse police trying to catch the robber type game. A lot of fun, though. Is this done by Fox? What? Fox did video games? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Yeah. And um, next week, you guys get the last of my PS1 collection, so that'll be exciting. Thanks, dude. You got anything Ooh. for us, Morgan? Sounds like he's preparing a stack. Yep. Apologies. I was hurriedly crying, trying to grab things. I didn't pick go. up much of anything over the last couple of weeks. Uh, new games have been pretty dry for the most part. So I think really the only thing I can show is this limited edition of uh, Legend of Legacy, which is a port of a 3DS game that came out uh, something like 2016. Uh, But it's the same art director from the Romancing Saga series. It's a typical turn-based action, uh, a typical turn-based RPG. Mm -hmm. Uh, Apparently very brutal. Um, I have not yet had the chance to play the full game. I played the demo, the wife, Really enjoyed this one. Uh, so the port was a no brainer. NIS is publishing, and I typically buy like something like 90% of their uh, limited editions nowadays. So, yeah, that was that was a no brainer for me. Oh, yeah. It's hard to go wrong with NIS limited editions, even the standard games, majority of them go up in price. Yeah, I think I the just- only one recently that I it passed on was cry machina but that's because i i was done real dirty on um did any did either of you play cry star by chance i uh, didn't but i know it's a terrible game like it's the terrible game. best five jrpg that no one wants <laughs> it, it's it's another one of those like one and two button action rpgs that is super generic the idea behind it's really good because it's just depressing but like it's just not fun to play and at the point at that time, I think it was like a ninety dollar complete in box game, so I just sold it. And then they come out with Cry Machina, and it's basically the same thing, except in a future, uh, future tense like Android waifu kind of thing. And it, eh, it's just the same game. Furyu like Furyu does not do action RPGs well, so I just avoid those altogether. They do great, great turn based RPGs like Hero Land. But stay away from the action RPGs. They're just not very good. They're real not generic. many people do good action RPGs, let's be honest. If I find a good one that's not from software, I'm like, oh my god. Like um, Code Vein, for example. Like, that was brilliant. It just came out of nowhere. Um, Lies of P, that was brilliant as well. It just came out of nowhere. I had problems with Lies of P, actually. Like, I bought it very excited because i i absolutely love bloodborne like on my arm is hopefully it translates well but like orphan of costs literally on my arm because that boss blew my fucking mind when i played the bloodborne dlc like that i'm one of those typical like i'll go through the FromSoft games i'll never summon i just want to do it on my own prove my worth right and that's one that literally stopped me from finishing the DLC. Like that's one of I think two bosses that I had to summon for, and it just it shocked the shit out of me. And I don't know. But that, I, was... I find this story crazy because I've had this conversation with people like five or six times. So I actually beat that boss first try. I have no idea how, but 
prior to that boss, there's like a um, there's a hole you can go down, and in the hole there's these two guys, and I got stuck on that like fifty dies. Like I, that was the hardest part of the game for me right before the orphan the cost. And I spoke to people who got stuck on the same. T- you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you go down this well and there's these two guys down there and like one on one they're all right but fighting them both in the same room is tough. but i beat the orphan of cost first try i don't know <laughs> that is absolutely also, insane like, to hear really you're a level. you're a god amongst men <laughs> i don't know just yeah it happens i never attempted a second attempt at him though so. <laughs> yeah that's the thing when i feel Sometimes when I play those games, I haven't played them as much as you guys, but like sometimes when I win, I'm like, did I really win or am I just like lucky this time? <laughs> like, yeah, like, I've watched I've won... like, never seen that move he's done before. I've exactly. <laughs> For some reason, that time when I fought him, he decided to pick his nose instead of attack. And I got to hit him three times real quick in the nuts, and I won. But every other time, he kicks my ass. So I don't know why that happened that time, but I'll take it. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I need. To, I hope for in the game is I need like the the, the boss to get stuck on a clip, like a ledge, and glitch out or something. <laughs> Even in that DLC, like the first boss of that DLC, the big fire dog thing, I got stuck on that like thirty attempts. Really. That is so interesting. I know a lot of people say they get stuck on Lady Maria, and that's the one that took me, like, I think two attempts. It was crazy no, easy Lady for some Maria reason. Lady was, Maria wasn't too bad. But Lady Maria is the type of boss that if you parry, it's a really easy boss fight. That See, might... I think that was my problem, too. Like, I, I went the whole game never using the gun because <laughs> I was too stubborn to use it. Fair. Like, if you do the final boss fight of the game with the gun, it it's not a boss fight. It's a dance. It's such a beautiful fight. And that's one of my most best moments of playing Bloodborne was like dancing with the final boss. I didn't get hit and just done it perfectly. And it felt like this is what you meant to do. It just felt amazing. Playing the game that was intended to be played. (laughs) Such a good game. Why don't they remaster that? (laughs) You go on Twitter, that trends like every week. People are looking for a 4K version of that game. That'd be sick. Either a 4K, or a sequel would be even better, but um, yeah, that it, game it'd be hard to do a sequel. It, I, I could see them not doing a sequel because of the lore and just making like a new game. Yeah, that'd be or a prequel or something. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, really it, anything. Like I, I, I was a big fan of Sekiro too, and I mean something like that would even be pretty great. Honestly, like I, I don't know. I'm sort of sour about Elden Ring in general because it doesn't feel it didn't feel as impactful to me as like Dark Souls One did or Dark Souls Three or Bloodborne or Sekiro for that matter. Like it falls in the like low tier for me because I don't I don't feel like the bosses were interesting enough. Like, I think I feel like the whole gimmick of the game was go explore the world, go ride your horse places. And then the bosses were kind of like an afterthought, really. Uh, I'll counter and with that argument, because I, I think it's one of my favorite games of all time. I think the bosses were good, but the problem is they reused a lot of them. And as soon as you're fighting a boss you've already fought, it's not fun anymore. Or if you're fighting a boss that has like there's two of them and it's two bosses from the start of the game or it's like a double strength version of this boss like that's what i didn't enjoy but then again there were like 180 bosses throughout the game so i do kind of understand why they reuse some of them it was crazy and necessary to use that many like it, i would have been so much happier if they would have narrowed this this whole world down like 30 percent narrow the boss count down 30 percent and make them all unique i can only fight these stupid like gargoyle statues that like shimmy across the field so many times I can only fight Godskin duo separately so many times before I'm like, okay, I've seen this before. I'm done. Some of the um the chalice dungeons are the same and things like that. But overall I'm actually replaying it right now and I'm having just as a good experience than the first time I played it in anticipation for the DLC that's coming out. Which is super bummery like 
what the fact that they're trying to charge i think it's like two what 250 dollars or something for a statue and a voucher code yeah but that's collector's editions these days like i'm not bothering at all i'll be buying the digital version of the dlc code and then like three years later when the game of the year edition's cheap i'll buy that if it's a thing oh it will be yeah sure it will be. and then it'll you can still buy have, it'll, it'll, it'll still have a code the still edition of Dark Souls 3 that's all on the disc. You know, that's the version to own today. Yeah, and Bloodborne, the Power Region, the Game of the Year edition, has everything on the disc too. Yeah, same as the Chinese version. It's definitely the one to own. Now, that Bloodborne DLC, I think it's the best DLC of all time. Like, in terms of value for money, that that is DLC right there. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, um... What was I gonna say? Did Bloodborne come out on PS4? Or was that a PS3 game? PS4, 2014. Okay. Or 15. Because I remember when it I was played an early it. PS4 game. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with the graphics. I kind of looked like a fancy PS3 game to me. I could be crazy, like, but it didn't feel that it was an, gorgeous. It was an early PS4 game. It made sense. Yeah. And it was in the whole Victorian era, so it's very dark and I think that's got to do with the charm of the game, though. Once you like mm-hmm. start to love the game, you enjoy it for that aspect. Same as Demon Souls. I love the PS3 version of Demon Souls because of what it is. Like I, I like it on PS5, but my favorite of the two is the PS3 version because it's creepy and it's eerie and like there's a dungeon mm-hmm. in the the valley of the big swamp. You can't see anything. It's pitch black. It's scary as fuck. PS5, it's not that scary. You can see everything. It's lights and you know where to go. When I first played that on PS3, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, moving really slowly, looking behind me. Like, I don't want to die. It's been like an hour since my last checkpoint. I, I'm, I've got no health left. Like, I'm fucked, please. <laughs> yeah, no, it's such a good game. So I think that's one of the... When I was even saying back about talking about Shadow Towers, so I, they're so good at the atmosphere. Like I don't know, they when you play those games, like those worlds feel depressing, man, and bleak, and creepy, and like, like I don't know, like it, they just really do. Like they have, they're so good at that, like gothicy, dark vibe. Like I, I also like I don't know, like. Um, the every like, I think we talked about this before in the public. Like, every character like you talk to, like they have a story that's like this tragedy, that's like this horrible thing. It's like so fascinating and so deep, and and um, like it matters. And like the quests, like you get to see the whole story, and you get to find out the past, and you find out more about like the fucked up shit that happened to that character. And that most of the stories are sad, and, like they have bad endings. Yes, like, they're all depressing and well. dark. And you find her, and you find these bones, and it's like the daughter. Yes, that's what I mean. It's like that. Those games are just like I don't know. They they're really good at that immersion, that immersive feeling of like you're in this dark world, and they're so good at it. Like they're so creepy, dude. I love it. You got more pickups, uh, Show Morgan. That's, that's the only thing I have, uh, honestly. Uh, everything else has been several weeks ago, and it's probably not. It's, it's stuff that I'm just not familiar enough with, probably to even show. To be honest with you, hey, that's all right. so good. I don't have pickups these days. I just show off my collection. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you know, we always say it just could be stuff picked up recently or just stuff you want to flex in your collection or whatever. Your stuff you have, just cool things, weird stuff. We like all that crap, strange things. I grabbed a couple of those too if you want to see. Hell yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, let's go. I guess the, the, the flex portion, right? I, I'll, I grabbed a couple of things. Uh, let's go. The Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Never heard of it. The PS4 version. <laughs> With the sleeve and everything. Oh, man. I didn't even know it had a sleeve. That's insane. I didn't know that either. Yeah, most of the ones on eBay don't have the sleeve. Uh, the one, like, if you just bought just, well, wrong way, just this, it's like a grand. It's really stupid. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Slip maybe, cover is like I, another couple of dollars. I love slip cover collecting, and I didn't even know it had a sleeve. <laughs> Yeah, people don't even want like, the giant it'll collector's edition. It'll one hundred percent even... happen to reprint. I'm sure of it. No, I, I super doubt that. Like they're they're all in on the Switch reprint, and that's it. Like PS4, it's it's done. They're not doing it. 
I don't know. Square Enix. I still sell PS One games. I reckon they'll regret it. I hope for everyone's sake they do. I so <laughs> I, I I at this point I I mean I'm leaning towards you that there won't because I don't understand like how could you be in the in the business of video game selling and say see that this game is selling for a thousand dollars and not reprint some like i don't get it like i baffles my mind even if like i work there and they're like let's just put them on ebay ourselves motherfucker like screw that like let's just print up 500 and do that like it just blows my mind that they i don't get it i just don't get it it's the same thing with the i've said this before with the spider-man plates they came out with for ps5 it's like everybody wanted those things like, why didn't you just make a mint? Why didn't you make? I don't get it. Why didn't you make more? I, everybody wants them. They're selling for double. Because everyone's sense. Christmas bonus that year was copies of the game. And all the ones on eBay are employees, Joe. <laughs> no, that could be it. I mean, maybe. That could be <laughs> it. That could, that could be it, dude. Like, literally. Like I don't slinger. Know. They all come from North Carolina. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We all know mm. what happened there. Mm. <laughs> or, um, what was the breach and clear on the Vita? Like 400 fucking copies on eBay sold from North Carolina, same state the limited run games were in. Hmm. Coincidence. Sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, that's, mm. I think you've got on eBay for like four years. That same seller had copies. It was wild. <laughs> well i uh i own the switch copy of that game and i'm totally cool with that i would i'm cool with that i'd love to have the pixel remaster collection on the ps4 but it, that, that 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 train has left the station for me i'm not no way i'm going to be playing those games it ain't worth the money to me at this point like i can play all those games i own all those games on other places like i have like the PSP collections and I have the PS1 collections and I I mean I have them if I want to play them. It's not like I need them. You want to play them that's super cheap. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly I'm a nerd. I don't want the remastered collection. I want to I play the SNES ones. I'd rather play the original games. I don't need them to be anything more than that. Well to add to that Joe if I wanted to play it I'd actually prefer to play on the Switch. Like the the Switch games. You know they're that eight mm-hmm. bit game yeah they don't really well on the Switch. I don't exactly. want to play it on my PS4 does not need to be played on ps4 well there, there's your exact argument why they won't do a ps4 reprint they're selling switch copies like hotcakes they don't need to it's fair yeah, sure it's true maybe we'll get a ps5 version one day who knows see that i could be i could believe that i could believe that why not that's what a lot of companies i'll just buy it from. again that's uh that's that that's killed me i i've hated that about collecting the last couple of years like limited run is I get so many games that I bought on the PS4 and they've re-released them again on the PS5 and I'm like, oh, come on. What are we, what are we doing? That I'm comes down to yourself, though. You don't have to buy games no. again. But we do. No, and I'm not. And I'm not. I've just, I've, I literally like just decided like I'm not collecting for the PS5 the way I did for the PS4. I'm just not going to. There's people out there going for full PS5 sets. They haven't got a mm-hmm. choice. They have to buy them or they miss out. You know. God bless them. Um, yeah, they just did Thumper, I think, for PS5, and like I love that game. It's it's a really great game. If you've not played it, I'd, I'd highly recommend it as someone who likes rhythm games. But mm-hmm. the the differences between the PS4 and PS5 version are so negligible. Like I'm not gonna go out and spend another what sixty five dollars on another collector's yeah. edition of it. I'm not I gonna bought, do it. I bought it twice. I have it on both. <laughs> it's also a VR game, though. And you're a VR collector, so that kind of makes sense. I was going to go for a full VR two set, but I'm decided I'm not doing that either. I just, I don't, I don't, the heart, I don't have the heart's not in it. Like once collecting, I feel like becomes once you start to once it starts to feel like an obligation more than like um sure. fun, yeah. then it, you need to stop. It's it, it's it's if it's not fun, you shouldn't be doing it. Like if you feel compulsion to buy things or you that FOMO feeling, like you should probably take a step back from collecting and just not do that take and a break like, games aren't going anywhere you stop, like I've, i haven't collected for a year i'm still a collector i still got a massive mm-hmm. collection i'm still playing games every day games sure. are still coming out I'm not missing out on anything because they're all still there for me to buy <laughs> yeah and for and, me it's like i got shit i got a, i need a roof 
on my house. I need to fix my septic tank. That's like shit's like I just I can't just always buy games. I have things I gotta buy. Like it's you know. So. Well, and then you bring up FOMO, Joe. Like I haven't been buying things, and you look at FOMO differently now. Like I just observe. So I see games that I want, and I see the prices go up and down, and I see games that I want get re um, reprinted, which is like, mm-hmm. oh, that's cool. I I wanted this. I probably would have spent a hundred bucks on it, but now it's forty dollars, and it it'll stay that price because there's like ten thousand Castle Crashes, perfect example. I always wanted that a couple of hundred dollar game, and now it's reprinted and it's cheap. You know, and you can buy it. I just awesome. ordered it. Reggie hooked me up and told me where I could get it. If I was still collecting. I may have spent a couple hundred bucks on the FOMO version and bought that, which would be worth nothing now. You know, worth hmm. the same price as the normal copy. <laughs> so that's why FOMO is weird. Like half the time you get rewarded for patience and half the time you get punished. I feel like so today like, you never FOMO, know. they take advantage of it. Like if you had 15 years ago, you were buying stuff. It wasn't getting reprinted. That, that was never happening. But today, yeah. like, Expensive PS4 games, for example. Most of them have been reprinted. Like most of them, not some of them, most of them. And the ones that haven't, is like Godzilla because of licenses issues, and they've all tried to reprint them and different things like that. Mm. So like collecting the expensive stuff these days is a risky. Yeah, it's risky because it might be reprinted, and but you've got to be aware of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I'm not buying any like heavy hitters on the PS4 right now, unless like I know they're not getting reprinted. Like you just know they're not, and like they're going up in price, like weird plays or exclusives and stuff like that. Like I'd buy that because I just don't think Earth Atlantis is getting a reprint. You know what I'm saying? But like, um, especially I the think... games that they make themselves, because you know that limited run aren't going to get a copy of them, etc. Correct. So exactly, and like I don't see VGP reprinting anything from limited run or strictly limited or any of those companies you know no, uh, i could say from limited run because it's not a limited run game it's a you know it's screw mm. this publisher and then suddenly they want more copies out there and like well if it's something they just distributed yeah but it's not like yeah i've never seen them reprint an actual like numbered limited run release or anything like that so yeah, yeah, I, agree. I, I would actually counter on the Play Asia thing recently. Actually, uh, what is it? Uh, Juan Yuan Sword Gates of the Firmament or something is some Chinese RPG just got a new PS5 print, and that game was like $200 used for the longest time as a PS4 game. Oh, cool. So I don't know. That's I think good. I think it's possible. Well, I, I it's not a reprint though, that's not a re release on the PS5 or whatever. That's Sort of. Yeah, but it's a similar thing. Like a re-release drags the price down. Oh, because all time. those people that were on waiting for it have bought the newer version. Other people try and sell their copies. Suddenly, the two hundred dollar version is being flooded on eBay for like one hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's like a temporary f- thing, though. Like, like that happened with the Rays, the Rays collection. You know, like they did that Rays chronology thing. Like it dropped the PS One games for like a minute, but they went right back up. They're still looking expensive again. So I don't know. But I think I think you're right. Like I think there's there's like when when the new one comes out, people sell off. There's like like you said, there's like a a flood on the eBay all of a sudden of people trying to upgrade their copies or sell them. It's the same thing that happened with the Steam decks. I noticed when the OLEDs came out, like before the OLED got announced, you know, a five twelve gig Steam deck was like four hundred bucks. As soon as that OLED got announced, I was a thousand of them on for sale for like two hundred. I saw my PS4 when the PS5 came out. Like, Everybody's just trying to flip their old Steam decks to get the new ones super cheap. I was like, yeah, I should, I should buy up like four of these things. But why? I don't know. I just want them, I guess. <laughs> They're cheap. Why not? I'll think of what I... I'll think of the reason I need them later. <laughs> For now, let's just buy them. <laughs> Morgan, have you got any um, social media pages you wanted to unplug? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm primarily on Instagram, ultrabosh 64 and that's that's really about it honestly um i'm just there for the community i think it's it's still a really great community i've been a part of it for several years now and mm-hmm. I, uh, I i love interacting with all of you and hey come check it out and have a conversation we'll talk about some games you're spot on there i hate instagram but i'm on there for the community and the people 
I absolutely hate the platform. I hate the direction they've gone in. I used to love posting a photo, scrolling down the feed, seeing all my friends, just what I want to look at. It's not like that today. I don't see a, Morgan says he posts a couple of times a week. I haven't seen one of your posts for like a year. And it's, that's what I want to see when I go on there, but it's not what I see. So it's, yeah, it's disappointing how it's gone, but that's social media these days. You yeah. want your stuff seen, you got to pay for it. Well, I don't know if I'm crazy, but like on YouTube, I feel like when I sub to someone, it will like say that I'm the bell is selected for notifications, but you still have to like go in and select it and unselect it and to get it to actually fucking notify you. Cause so, so there'll be so many times where like, I'll be like, I sub to this person and like, I have never seen their videos. What the hell? Like, I know I sub to this person and I look and the bell is highlighted and I'm just not getting their videos and I have to like reselect it and select it. And then it's like, now you'll get notifications. I'm like, how did me subbing to someone not indicate to you uh, enough that I would like to see the videos? Isn't that the point of subbing? What the fuck is the point of subbing? If you're not going to show me the videos? Oh yeah. What is the, the algorithm worked in weird ways. It's so and Twitch stupid, recently dude. did a thing where um, you used to be able to sign up for email alerts for your favorite streamer to go live. They disabled this after a few months, just automatically. So if you sign up for these alerts and then one day they go live and it's automatically gone, you just won't see the notification anymore. You won't know until you like manually go back into your notifications and turn it back on. That's stupid. It's like, I swear, like they don't, YouTube at some point, like it decided that it was like wanted to be TV. I don't, I don't get why they did that. Like YouTube for years was like where you would go if you don't want to watch mainstream television. Like I like, feel I like don't want to see that crap. This. I feel like it was TV who got onto YouTube and went, "Hey, YouTube, yeah. we don't make money anymore from TV. We need all our TV programs promoted on here. Here's all this yeah. money for advertisement." And then they said, "Here's some money." could you do me a favor and like stop promoting your, you you know, you know, the YouTubers. Do you mind doing that? Like, I swear they like stopped. Like I've seen how many channels do you remember through like for years that were just growing, 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 growing. And then the last two, three years, they've just stopped. Yeah, so many. I can tell you so many people that I know who have 800, Unless they subs, make sure 900,000 subs and million subs whatever like they they were constantly gaining subs and then all of a sudden i haven't seen them gain any subs in like a year like barely any and i'm like i'm telling you it's that youtube has designed to turn off the tap like they like do not want to promote their own content to people it's crazy like i i don't know i'm a conspiracy theorist i guess no, you, I mean, you're spot on. We get more people watching the podcast now on different platforms than YouTube, and it started on YouTube. That's, That's weird. pretty crazy. Like, we have 40 people watching right now. Only 11 of them are on YouTube. That's hmm. 75% of people watching it live are on different platforms, and YouTube's, like, where this all started from. So it's, you know, that might come down to YouTube not promoting it live to people, not even showing that we're live at all. We're possibly missing out on viewers. Oh, of course we are. They don't promote anybody to anybody. And like a lot of people, they, they, they think they're crazy. They're like, huh, I don't get it. It's like, no one watches my videos. Yeah. They don't, they, you're, they're not showing you their, your videos to anybody. It's, it's social media has gone real weird. They don't even show you if, like you said, they don't, you don't get to see your friends posts anymore. Like you huh. go on Facebook. I don't see what my friends post. Maybe they don't post anymore. Well, I don't know. You, they don't post anymore. And that's, that's part of it as well. But. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah. It's I know weird. on Instagram, it's, they still do. And I don't see my friends post on Instagram. I do on Twitter. I will see friends post on Twitter still. Uh, yeah, Twitter's pretty lively. Um, still, I feel like that's doing well. Uh, I'm, I'm speed killer wants to know if we're on Rumble. Uh, that's coming soon. I yeah, think, the um, only reason we're not is because Streamyards don't have Rumble. But as soon as Streamyards allow Rumble, we'll start streaming on Rumble. Yeah. Because right now I think we stream to Facebook and I, I don't know, maybe we get a lot. Well, I don't know. We'll figure out wherever people are watching the least and we'll just probably pull that and stream somewhere else. We could kill my Twitch. No one watches my Twitch. I got two Facebook pages that stream to. You know? <laughs> well, Twitch is another one. The only way you get promoted is if you show your tits. So. Hey, Twitch is the one where you put the time in. Like I've streamed 10,000 hours on Twitch. That's insane. Imagine putting 10,000 hours into a job. I think I've worked out 
I was getting paid like a dollar an hour for every hour I've ever streamed on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> you should just paint your boobs. I know. Why or, didn't I think of that, Joe? <laughs> or you should put on a fursuit and play Beat Saber. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and talk with a really silly, fake voice. I didn't need to stream know. more on Twitch because my streams have actually done really well lately. I am streaming Geo I just, I just big on um, authenticity. I don't like people who I think are acting like they're performing when you talk to them. When you're like, hi, and they're like, I am you. And I'm like, you're. I can respect people who have a persona on Twitch if they hold that persona the entire time they stream. I watch a guy who does that and he's like, he's normal. funny. He turns himself up to 400 for the stream and it is fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. But he can only go for a couple of hours because it's a, obviously it's persona he's putting on and he's doing it as a show. I, I mean, I'm not saying it can't be good. But I'm just saying that I, I personally like, I don't like, um, God, how do I put this? Like, I don't know. People are just fake and like brown nosy people who I feel like are just saying what I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I like people who are a little ugly around the edges because then I know they're real. I don't know. If that I say the sense. thing where I don't like watching big streamers. I only watch people who I can talk to because that's why I go on Twitch to talk to people. Mm-hmm. If someone's got more than 50 viewers, I'm probably not going to sit and watch them because they're not interacting with the chat. You know, I'd rather watch someone with two viewers who I can sit there and talk to for an hour. That's why I go on Twitch. That's a th- always what i felt like the platform was it was always a the viewer interacting with the streamer and i that's what i love twitch for it's true yeah i guess when you get so big like it kind of becomes tv at that point right you're just passively taking in whatever's there and you're even if you're trying to type furiously there's there's nothing you can do it's like shouting at the tv when you're watching football telling your favorite team to you know do better you're you're doing no good yeah exactly i watched the guy last night and one of his first times streaming and he didn't expect to have 70 viewers and the idea of the stream was to react to a video and an hour in he was still talking to chat and he's like guys i'm streaming to do this and you guys keep talking and i can't even do this and like he's like do you just want me to just keep talking or do you want to watch the video and <laughs> just talk the chat was just loving having him live and talking to the guy. Mm-hmm. yeah hey, one thing that i read recently that's disappointing to me because it's my favorite platform i love discord discord's great doesn't use ads you've joined pages that you want to see however it's just been announced that ads are coming to discord so good things don't last forever how and where and what like in what yeah i know i know how is it going to work but apparently ads are coming to discord Am I gonna open my keyboard to type a message and then like subway sandwiches are gonna pop up out of nowhere before I can wait 30 seconds before I can type? Yeah, it's gonna be Jared from Subway. Hey buddy, how you been? <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> um yeah, I heard this other awful thing too. Um that like uh certain tv companies are installing this thing in your hdmi port that like makes it so like if you pause a tv show or pause a game or something it's going to show you ads it's going to know when you're idle and it's just going to start showing you ads and like like i was like what the fuck man the ads are are just the devil i don't know um they're talking about it on asman stream and um he made a really good point that i thought was fascinating too is he like i think that like uh older tech like the like tvs that don't have all that shit built into it are gonna become like really valuable like people are gonna want the you know the, the dumb tvs you know they have smart That's tvs people are gonna want dumb tvs yeah they want tvs that won't have internet in them and the cameras and all this other crap and screw all that like uh, you know You know, I've had that argument for a long time. Why does like a dishwasher need access to my Wi-Fi network? It's the same deal. Like, yeah, yeah, starting my dishes from the other room would be convenient, but like it's unnecessary, right? My fridge does not need access to the internet so that someone can, you know, get into it and get access to my home network. It's that kind of stuff that really just doesn't make any fucking sense. And I feel the same way about TVs. If I'm going to, 
you know, cast the YouTube app or something. I'm going to do it from my phone. I'm not going to go into the, you know, settings of the TV and use whatever nonsense they have and go to Pluto or YouTube or whatever. Oh. You imagine waking up one day and you got like a smart car and your car's just like ordered itself four new tires because it said it's due. <laughs> it's taken it that's, out of your account. That's real. That's today. Teslas do this. <laughs> Like, this is the world we're going into. It's very scary. It's, it's a hellscape. I don't think people understand how shitty the digital world is going to be. It's 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 just like everything is controlled by someone else. It's not up to you. You don't own anything. You're just accessing their system as some sort of pleb. And all you're doing is you're paying access. for You, 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 don't, you never own anything. You're just getting a ticket to their ride. And you never, ever, ever can get a off temporary there, right? ticket. The permit. second you exactly the second you stop paying, that you get cut off. And it's well, you bullshit. saw the shit with the HP printers, right? Uh, no, yes, no. I've heard that. Yeah, like the uh, you told me, like that. They were, I can't remember if they were, their card expired on file or something like they wouldn't print anymore or some shit like that, right? Yep, the literally revoking yeah. access to their printer, and it tries mm -hmm. to get me to sign in every time I use it, but I just click the X and. I can still use it without signing in, but yeah, that's scary to hear. <laughs> yeah. I, well, that's another thing too, is I hate that. Like everything wants you to create an account and sign in and have a, an app and all this shit for every single thing. Like I go to my doctor's office and he's like, do you use our app? Do you use it? I'm like, no motherfucker. I call you, you write it down on a paper. I show up that day. That's how it fucking works. We don't need to make this any more complicated, asshole. I don't need a supermarket or something. I don't need I don't a know password what and I'm log in every day. Yeah, I don't need this shit, dude. Get out of here. Like, we don't need Apparently, all this. supermarkets are now they're getting your card details off like your rewards cards and things, and they um can see the car that you drive in the car park and it's all like linked in together and it's just like big brothers just watching us really is yeah that's why i keep getting all these ads for phoenix extension medicine they know how do they know <laughs> but they know every day they're like hey this pill you'll get three inch i'm like how do you know stop why is this camera on what the fuck i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> on that note we might call that a show guys <laughs> morgan thanks so much for coming on man it was a blast to chat with you it was a pleasure and you yeah, guys i've linked morgan's instagram in the description so go Drop him a follow over there. He's got some awesome stuff on, on his Instagram. Yeah. And you might get some ads for some penis medicine, but it is what it is. 10% <laughs> off. Use your code Joe. <laughs> That's <right>. Joe Rad. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I get a kickback for it, fuck it. I'll promote that on every show. I would use my code. <laughs> Let's do it. You <laughs> think of me every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's weird. All right, let's stop. Right, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you guys in the next one. Damn it, I went too far. <laughs> <laughs> Night, everybody. Peace. <laughs>